。えー、郷先生、スタート、プリーズスタート。郭老师，我们开始吧。哎，请葛老师开始。啊，任老师上来了是吧？任老师不管他，任老师在查密码，不管。Could you start? Please, please start. Okay. Uh, Ko 老师可以开始了，没问题。好的，好的，好。Okay, everyone. Uh, distinguished professors. Experts, teachers, and students. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for participating in the 2021 International Academic Symposium on Archinearing Design Research. I'm Germin, a Vice Dean of School of Architecture in SU. It's my great honor to host the opening ceremony. This symposium is co-hosted by Tokyo Tech, Southeast University, and East China Architecture Design and Research Institute. The purpose is to explore the frontiers of contemporary theory and practice based on integrated innovation of architecture and structure. To be specific, this symposium is organized by the Akineli Design Research Center, which is jointly constructed by the above three units and is initiated by Professor Tolo Takeuchi, Professor Shinichi Okuyama from Department of Architecture and Building Engineer, School of Environment and Society, Tokyo Tech and Dr. Guo Yiming from School of Architecture, SU, Mr. Zhang Junjie from ECADI. The co-organizer of the symposium is Architecture Technic Magazine. Now, it's my great pleasure to invite the heads of the above three units to give speeches. Now, please welcome Mr. Zhang Junjie, General Manager and the Chief Architect of ECADI to make a speech. Mr. Zhang Junjie is a well-known expert in architecture, specializing in the design and the management of large and complex projects. Hello, <clears throat> uh, uh, dear distinguished professors of the world, uh, and also a lot of my old friends. Uh, good afternoon and uh, good morning, uh, guests and teachers, students. Welcome to the symposium and uh, we get here today, despite being in a virtual space due to reasons you probably know, to talk to exchange ideas with friends and colleagues from all over the world. It gives us great pleasure to welcome you on behalf of the organizing committee and express our gratitude to you for your kindest support. In our little world of architecture, there is another thing that is going vital, viral, and that is the integration of architect and structure. What's more, the way architects and structure engineers collaborate is also changing. As a result of digital advancements and constant innovations. They both agree on integration because a good architecture should be a child born 
of a perfect marriage between architect and a structure. An architectural proposal should reflect the structure concept and the structure innovations <clears throat> to be able to facilitate architect creation. Today, together, they will make buildings more secure, more economical, and sustainable. As any group marriages, this relationship needs nurturing. We have to put effort to research, training, and practice. I'm proud to say Icardi has made efforts over the years. Through our different types of projects, such as airports, staging city integration projects, cultural buildings, Uh, maybe something wrong or something wrong in the net. I think that finished, I think. Tango, <laughs> 张总您听不到我们说话是吧最后一小段。More uh, honorable guests will speak at the symposium. They come from different countries which with different backgrounds and expertise. So I'm really looking forward to hear your experience and insights. I hope you all will enjoy the event as I know I will. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, uh, please welcome Professor Norishiko Nakai from Tokyo Tech to make a speech. Professor Nakai is the Dean of the School of Environment and Society at Tokyo Tech and a well-known expert in urban planning and urban landscape. Welcome. Well, um, <clears throat> thank you, Professor Gi. Uh, Professor and Dean Tonzan of Southeast University, and Mr. Zhang Zizang of East China Architectural Design and Research Institute, invited speakers and all the participants. Uh, good afternoon from Tokyo. Well, it's a beautiful, fine autumn day here in Tokyo. Well, my name is Norihiro Nakai, and I'm the Dean of School of Environment and Society. Tokyo Institute of Technology. Now, on behalf of the members of Tokyo Tech and School of Environment and Society, I'd like to make a short welcoming speech to this wonderful event. First of all, I'd like to express my deepest gratitude to the organizers of today's symposium, the members of School of Architecture, Southeast University and Archineering Design Research Center for your dedicated efforts to hold this conference today, particularly under the difficult situation caused by COVID-19. Without your efforts, well, this wonderful event could not be realized. As you may well know, <clears throat> School of Architecture at Southeast University and Department of Architecture and Building Engineering at Tokyo Tech has a good relationship 
with a long history. As I understand, one of the founder members of School of Architecture is a graduate of Tokyo Tech long time ago. Archineering Design Research Center, which is a joint research platform established by SEU Architecture School, Architectural Society of Shanghai, East China Architectural Design and Research Institute, and Tokyo Tech Architecture Department is a good outcome from this long history. And I'm, I am very grateful to see our education and research at Tokyo Tech with the inter integrated nature of architecture and building engineering has been much helped and enhanced by the cooperation by this center. We will definitely hope to continue this well-established relationship and Tokyo Tech and my school is very much prepared to support for this. The topic of today's symposium is theory and practice based on the integrated innovation of architecture and structure. Tokyo Tech set up three strategic research fields when we became designated National University Corporation four years ago. And one of the three strategic research field is sustainable social infrastructure, the SSI. SSI is all our research efforts towards safer, more resilient, smarter, and more environmentally sustainable built environment in the future. As most of the academic members of my school, including Department of Architecture and Building Engineering, are involved more or less in the research and practice relating to built environment, the SSI initiatives are led by School of Environment and Society, and we will be soon launching SSI research platform within Tokyo Tech. This platform will not be confined within Tokyo Tech, and we hope to seek for overseas partnerships, both in academia and practical field in the future, and develop various research projects with these partners. In this context, there is nothing better, more timely and suitable than the topic of today's symposium. And I am very pleased to see such a large number of participants on my PC display who show interest to this topic. I hope you will be satisfied by the lecture and discussion today, and you will have something useful ideas at the end of the conference. It is going to be a five hour long conference, uh, but I am sure you will feel how short it's been at the end. Please stay online and enjoy the meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your kind support. Now, uh, please welcome Professor Ren Jiawei, uh, Secretary of CPU. SU School of Architecture part, Party Committee to make a speech. Uh, Professor Ren Jiawei is a well-known expert in architecture, specializing in public buildings and urban design. Uh, Professor Ren Jiawei. Mm -hmm. You mean?
um, maybe uh, Professor Lin is there something wrong with the with the register in Zoom Zoom link. So maybe uh, we put the his time to the to the end of the this uh, symposium. So okay. uh, skip, to, uh, skip skip to uh, skip to the uh, module one. I think it's better for us. Hmm. Okay, so uh, okay. can I start? Yeah, please. Okay, so uh, this symposium today uh, has, has two sessions, respectively chaired by Professor Tolu Takiwuch from Tokyo Tech. Mm -hmm. So we know experts, experts in engineering design mm -hmm. and uh, Professor Okuyama who is also a winner architect. Now, uh, please invite Professor Takuchi to preside over the first session. Welcome. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Go. Uh, my name is uh, Toru Takeuchi uh, from Tokyo Tech. And I'm uh, have uh, the first uh, part of uh, the module one. Uh, architectural approach in uh, structural design. Uh, we have uh, invited the four uh, distinguished uh, lecturers uh, from now. So uh, uh, we firstly start with uh, uh, Professor Angus MacDonald, uh, who is a professor of emitters of architectural structure and the former head of the Department of Architecture at the University of Edinburgh. Uh, he teaches at uh, all level of the degree programs in architecture and architectural history at Edinburgh College of Art. Uh, his research interests include architectural structures, architectural history, and uh, cultural landscape. And he is uh, author of uh, 11 books on uh, this subject, including uh, a famous uh, structure and architecture, uh, which is available in seven languages. Please welcome uh, Professor MacDonald. Thank you, Professor Takauchi. Uh, I take it that everyone can hear me? Could someone indicate yeah. that you can hear yeah. me all right? Yeah. Okay. Yes, good. Well, thank you for inviting me and thank you for that very nice welcome. So I'll begin my talk. The introduction of digital technology to architectural design has opened up new and exciting prospects for the development of architectural form. The free exploration of form has, of course, always been possible by the application of the humble pencil to paper. But the detailed specification of form by digital media allows architects to freely explore form in a controlled way. It also enables engineers to calculate the stresses that will occur within freeform structures so as to specify safe dimensions for elements. It makes builders aware of their exact shapes, which facilitates construction and digitally controlled fabrication technology such as 3D printing can enable. Sorry. Yes, sorry about that. Uh, can enable the economic realization of complex form. Patrick Schumacher of Zaha Hadid Architects has identified what he considers to be a new approach to form making based on the power of digital computing, in which architectural form is considered to be built up from tiny discrete elements, which at the macro scale give buildings the character of continuous flowing surfaces rather than of assemblies of large scale elements. He has termed this process a topological approach to design, and previous methodologies based on assemblies of larger elements, such as beams and columns, as being typological. Schumacher argues that a new design freedom has been facilitated by exploiting the power of digital computing, and that this enables shapes to be manipulated and controlled by sophisticated software. He describes this as a new engineering intelligence made possible by the digital revolution and refers to this new architectural style as parametricism, architecture that can harness the structural efficiency of an interconnected network, an era of structural fluidity 
and structural optimization in which digital technology retools the engineer and allows the structural forces to flow freely through the surfaces provided by the architect. Schumacher's statement create a misleading impression, however because although it is true that the architect may be free to invent new and interesting forms which digital technology allows engineers to analyze and builders to fabricate, the methodology is not in fact capable of directing the resulting internal forces, as Schumacher suggests. Only the basic physics of the situation, the effect of gravity on mass, can do that. So it is not correct to assume that these freely imagined forms can harness the structural efficiency of interconnected networks, or that they can be made efficient by clever digital manipulation. In another new development, Neri Oxman and the Mediated Matter Research Group at the MIT Media Lab are considering afresh the ways in which efficient and non-wasteful forms have evolved in natural organisms and are exploring how these might be allied to advanced techniques of design and fabrication to create a new kind of architecture. This has been part of a more general revival of interest in recent years in the use of biomimicry as a source of architectural ideas, as summarized, for example, in Michael Pollan's book, Biomimicry in Architecture. The biomimicry approach is often promoted through statements such as Julian Vincent's, in nature, materials are expensive and shape is cheap, an engaging aphorism that implies that nature always uses material efficiently. This statement is, however, highly simplistic in its description of what actually occurs in natural the latter grow by cell division, rather than by being fabricated artificially, into shapes that have evolved through natural selection to accommodate complex and very specific multiple functionalities, which on the one hand are very different from those which humans require of buildings, and on the other are not necessarily of the highest efficiency, because other properties may be more significant. It is important to bear in mind that nature may be characterized, depending on specific circumstances, by great parsimony and also by great profligacy. The forms produced in nature are related to the performance of creatures as organisms in relation to their environment and may not actually be relevant to an application in humans' building projects. Their visual excitement, which may be what principally interests architects, is a matter of culturally determined perception. The imitation of, purely of the purely visual qualities of natural forms, without a proper understanding of why these forms have originated and of their multiple functions, is an unreliable procedure for the creation of buildings with the types of physical properties required for sustainable architecture. The opportunities offered by digital technology for the development of new types of architectural form are ob obviously very exciting, but there are nevertheless certain realities that intrude into any attempt to make a physical object such as a building that have to be recognized by designers who wish to act responsibly as opposed to dreamers and fantasists. Recognition of these realities will be especially relevant to design in a world in which the mitigation of climate change is emerging as the highest priority. Let me illustrate this with a story that begins with a question. And the question is, these laws of Newton, are there no exceptions? <clears throat> this was a rhetorical question that was asked of a physicist expert witness by a frustrated defense lawyer in court proceedings that followed a vehicle accident. The expert witness had demonstrated that by considering the mass of the vehicles and their final locations following the accident, it could be demonstrated using Newton's laws that the individuals involved had been driving at excessive speed. Repeated questioning by the lawyer had failed to reveal any inconsistencies in the expert witness's testimony, hence the rhetorically expressed annoyance. 
The exchange between the lawyer and the physicist highlighted an essential difference between human-made law and the principles that govern the behavior of physical systems, which is that the performance of the latter is determined by agencies that are fundamental and unalterable. Our human understanding of these laws and their complexity continues to deepen as science advances, but the laws themselves are part of the workings of the universe that we inhabit and are not affected by human desires or constructs. That there are no exceptions to the laws that govern physical behavior is an axiom that has great relevance in the field of architectural design, which throughout the modern period has been informed by many ideas and theories that are largely unconnected to physical reality. From aphorisms such as ornament is crime, Adolf Loos, glass destroys hatred, Bruno Taut, Less is more, Mies van der Rohe, less is a bore, Robert Venturi, to the sophisticated French philosophy-based constructs of much of the architectural theory of the late 20th century, the ideas that have informed new architecture in the modern period have been largely matters of opinion, unrelated to physical realities. They are not statements of fact, and they have resulted in formalistic approaches to design that have produced buildings that have poor physical properties, that make wasteful and extravagant use of materials, and that perform poorly in respect of all aspects of function. Such theories make unreliable guides for designers wishing to produce buildings that have particular physical properties, such as a low carbon footprint because the latter is determined by the laws of physics rather than by polemically expressed views. There is a danger that the present excitement with the possibilities offered by digital applications in design may cause architects to repeat the environmental mistakes of the modern era. If architectural design is to contribute to the mitigation of the climate emergency, such mistakes must be avoided. A building's structure accounts for between 40% and 90% of its fabric. Structural design for low consumption of material and therefore for low embodied carbon is closely related to form because the internal forces that loads generate within structures and that determine the amount of material that they must contain are almost entirely dependent on all aspects of their shapes, both their overall forms and the detailed geometries of their constituent elements. The act of designing a building, that is of determining its form, is therefore also an act of structural design that will have a significant effect on its carbon footprint. The quest for structural efficiency, in the quest for structural efficiency, the form searching techniques of the pre-digital age that found expression in buildings such as Gaudi's Sagrada Familia in Barcelona, or Fry Otto and Ted Happel's timber lattice shell at the Mannheim Multihalle were based on physical models that enabled the effects of gravity on mass to act directly. Computer-based form generating software that is programmed to search for efficient forms produces similar results. In the physical laws that govern these exercises, there are no exceptions. And as I already emphasized, the form generated is not a free choice. There is therefore a danger that the new approaches to design being promoted at the beginning of the 21st century by opinion formers such as Oxman and Schumacher, be the biometric, parametric or topological, will simply perpetuate the design methodologies generated by the polemical statements of previous modern architectures and produce forms that are equally inappropriate for buildings in an age of climate emergency because they are not related to the physical realities and functional requirements of buildings. So what are the essential truths based on the laws of physics that have to be accepted if an efficient low carbon architecture is to be produced? The first of these is a realization that some things cannot be changed by new design methodologies or methods of manufacture because they are, man they are fundamental, determined by the basic physics of the world. 
A second is that to achieve high technical performance, form must be matched to physical function and physical reality, not to polemically expressed theory, and not even necessarily to programmatic function, which is what Louis Sullivan was referring to in his famous aphorism, form ever follows function. The efficiency of a structure as measured by the amount of material required to give it adequate strength, is predominantly determined by the types of internal force that loads generate within it. The most important distinction is between uh, loads that cause elements to bend, transverse loads, and those that produce internal forces that are axial. As is discussed in my book, Structure and Architecture, which, by the way, is a very good read, this is a crucial difference because axial forces can be resisted with elements that are an order of magnitude smaller than those that are required to resist bending. And the type of internal force that occurs is entirely dependent on the overall form of the structure in relation to the pattern of applied load. The range of efficiencies that can occur is very large, as may be demonstrated by the following examples of very well-known buildings. In Le Corbusier's Villa Savoie, a beam depth of around 300 millimetres was required for a span of approximately five metres. At the Sydney Opera House, a shell frame thickness of around two metres was required for a span of around 70 metres. At the CNIT shell in Paris spans 200 metres, with a total shell thickness of only 120 millimetres. Using the admittedly rather crude device of the ratio of span to thickness as the measure of efficiency, the differences in these structures are remarkable. The least efficient is the Villa Savoie with a ratio of 13. Next comes the Sydney Opera House at 35. That of the CNIT shell is 1,666. The differences in efficiency between the first two structures are significant, with the Sydney Opera House being three times as efficient as the Villa Savoie. The CNIT shell is two orders of magnitude, 100 times more efficient than the other two. The differences in efficiency are almost entirely due to form. The very high efficiency of the CNIT shell is the result of the combination of an overall form which is a parabolic curve and the geometric configuration of its cross section. I've heard people describe the CNIT shell as having a natural form. This is not accurate. It's a form that responds to the laws of physics, which of course nature must also do. The parabolic form generates internal forces which are pure axial compression. The shape of the shell's cross-section is a hollow box, consisting of two 60 millimeter thick skins forming the outer surfaces, separated by 60 millimeter thick diaphragms to give an overall depth of 1.5 meters. This is a highly efficient shape of cross-section for the resistance of compression, where the possibility of buckling, a bending phenomenon, has to be allowed for. The slight corrugation of the shell surfaces provides efficient resistance to any tendency for local bending or buckling to occur. The inefficiency of the other two structures described here is also due to a combination of their overall forms and the cross sections of their elements. The very low efficiency of the Villa Savoie's structure is due to an overall form that produces only bending in the horizontal elements. The better performance of the Sydney Opera House shell is due principally to its overall form producing internal forces that are combinations of bending and axial force, which reduces the amount of bending that is present. Both of these structures have elements with solid cross sections, which is an inefficient configuration for the resistance of bending type internal force that dominates their responses to load. Comparison of these three structures demonstrates the essential features of the effect of form on structural efficiency. The key question is the amount of bending that is produced, and this is dependent on the overall form. The shapes of the individual elements at a detailed level, cross-section and longitudinal profile, are also crucial. The important issue again is the efficient resistance of such bending as may be present. Cross sections that resist bending efficiently have the material dispersed from their centers. Hollow tubes, 
eye sections, and so far as longitudinal profile is concerned, features such as triangulated geometries. The comparison of the three structures demonstrates that if the shapes of a building, the shape of a building is freely determined and not related to the basic physics of the situation, the resulting structure is likely to be inefficient in the use of material, and that the degree of wastefulness will probably be very large. There are no exceptions to this rule. If structural mass is to be minimized, the form adopted is not a free choice. The use of digital technology to experiment freely with form, as proposed by designers such as Schumacher and Oxman, risks repetition of the wasteful practices of the modern era, if not tempered by recognition of the physical realities of the relationship between form and physical performance. The large quantities of steel that were required to realize the Haidar Aliyev Center in Baku, a building that relied heavily on digital processes, provide a further recent example of what occurs when flowing forms, when the, sorry, when the laws of physics are disregarded in the exercising of a free choice of form. The complex overall form generates high levels of bending that require the use of a steel space frame structure of very high carbon footprint for its realization. Spans are variable because the roof canopy is supported intermittently on an underlying reinforced concrete armature with maximum spans of around 30 meters, which with an average total tube section thickness of around 60 millimeters gives the structure a span to thickness ratio of 500, which makes its efficiency a third that of the CNIT shell. It is however made from steel, a material that is around seven times stronger than reinforced concrete. If it had been made in reinforced concrete, the equivalent thickness would have been 420 millimeters, and the ratio would then have been more like 71, which would put it in the same efficiency category as the Sydney Opera House. In view of the variety of structural components involved in the structure, it, also, it is also typological rather than topological and involved high inputs of energy for design, manufacture and construction that overall contributed to a high level of total embodied energy. Another essential reality that must be addressed before any proposal for a low carbon structure can be taken seriously is the effort required to build it, which is obviously affected by the level of complexity of its form. It is an unfortunate fact, yet another intrusion of inconvenient reality, that the forms that minimize the amount of material required for the structure are complex and therefore difficult to make. Space frameworks are more efficient than solid slabs. I-shaped cross sections are more efficient than solid rectangles. Tapered profiles are usually more efficient than parallel sides and curvilinear forms more efficient than rectilinear ones. State-of-the-art methods of fabrication, such as 3D printing, can mitigate the difficulties of making complex forms to some extent, but do not eliminate them, and the machines and processes involved produce high carbon footprints. This is yet another reality that will have to be taken seriously by designers of buildings. In future, it will be the total carbon footprint of buildings that matters, and this will not necessarily be minimized by adopting efficient forms that reduce material consumption or the flowing forms derived parametrically. The energy involved in design, fabrication, construction, and subsequent maintenance will be important additional considerations. All design involves compromise. And in structural design, a balance has to be struck between the complexity that will minimize material consumption and the simplicity that will reduce the resources required to design, build and maintain a structure. For responsible design in a low carbon economy, the goal must be overall economy of means rather than the minimization of any particular input. In the context of the horizontally spanning structures required for architecture, the most significant factor that influences the best compromise is span. The longer the span, the greater is the level of complexity that is justified in the pursuit of overall economy of means. The parabolic form of the CNIT shell was fully justified for a span of 200 meters. For buildings of more modest scale, a much simpler structure normally provides the best compromise and lowest carbon footprint even if it is less efficient 
in its use of material and based on a typological rather than a topological or parametric approach to design. The inefficient structure of the Villa Savoie was entirely appropriate for the spans involved due to its simplicity. In contrast, the organically based or free flowing forms shown here are mostly inappropriate. Their engaging forms are overly complex for their scale and not related to their physical function. If low overall carbon footprint is to become a high priority in architecture or any other branch of design, the achievement of economy of means with structure, normally the largest contributor to embodied carbon, will have to be given greater importance in the design agenda. The realities outlined above will then have to be taken seriously. And in the case of buildings, this will place considerable restrictions on the choices of form that are available to architects. The implications of form in all its aspects and the question of buildability with available technologies, albeit the most advanced, will be essential considerations in relation to design for low carbon uh, architecture. Architects will have to understand the true implications of any form that they propose, and these will have to be based on an understanding of the physical realities of the situation, to which there are no exceptions, rather than on culturally derived theory. As a philosophy of design, the idea of achieving overall economy of means is not new and was well described by two prominent engineers of the mid 20th century, Pierre Luigi Nervi and Eduardo Torroja, who also demonstrated its application in their respective practices. It involved the development of a design from knowledge of the relationship between form and structural performance, of the properties of materials and of available construction techniques, all purely technical matters. We see examples of a similar approach being adopted in the present day by Shigeru Ban. Note that where a short span is required here, a simple structural form is used. Central to the thinking of Nervi, Toroja and Ban is the idea that designers of infrastructure should be under a moral obligation not to waste society's resources or the planets one might now add. The adoption of such an ethical position was generally lacking in the modern period, in which architects were often congratulated for excess rather than economy. It has assumed much greater importance in the present day of climate emergency. The greatest challenge that architecture must now face is to amalgamate design methodologies that recognize unalterable physical realities with the cultural aspirations that elevate architecture from an exercise in mere building to that of an art form. A reconsideration of what is regarded as beautiful or interesting, visually and spatially, may be required. And this may be just one aspect of a much greater adjustment of the mind that will have to occur if buildings that are environmentally sustainable are to be produced. In future, architects will certainly have to work with nature rather than against it, but not through the simplistic imitation of natural forms, as in much of biomimicry, or in the freely determined forms of parametricism, and certainly not with the idea of exercising domination over the natural world, which was the spirit of most of modernism. In future, architecture will have to be seen <clears throat> as part of its wider environment. The rules to which there are no exceptions will have to be understood and respected with humility. As Sullivan suggested, nature is our friend, not our implacable enemy. It is my belief that it is of the very essence of every problem that it contains and suggests its own solution. This I believe to be a natural law. What he was suggesting is that we should look to the essence of the problem to find our solutions and not to externally impose cultural theory. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> It's a very uh, quite suggestive uh, lecture, and uh, I'm uh, totally agree with uh, your opinion. Thank you very much again, and uh, uh, probably uh, we discuss uh, this matter later. Uh, thank you very much again. So uh, the next lecturer uh, we would like to invite is uh, Professor uh, Yoshiharu Kanebako, uh, who is uh, uh, president of Kanebako Structural Design Office. 
uh, and uh, adjacent uh, adjunct uh, professor at Tokyo Tech. He is one of the most famous structural engineers in Japan and served the president of Japan Structural Engineers Association between 2011-2015. His work includes Kyoto Station, Hyogo Prefectural Museum, Aomori Prefectural Museum, Hiroshima Baseball Stadium, Fui Barb Museum, and so on. Yeah, he was awarded the JASCA Prize, Gengo Matsui Prize, AIJ Awards, ISS uh, Boy Awards, etc., and published uh, several books related to structural design. Uh, please welcome Professor Hanebako. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, uh, Professor Takeuchi. I'm Yoshiro Kanebako. I organize the structural design office in Tokyo, and I teach uh, structural design practice in Tokyo Tech. So today I talk about education of structural design related with architectural design. Uh, thinking about architectural design and structural design, uh, each covers different field. In a good relationship, an architect thinks about the structure and uh, an engineer thinks about architecture. The close relationship between architect and the structure engineer creates enhancement of architectural attraction. As a discussion produced creative idea, I think. At first, I introduce a museum project focused on the relationship architectural design and structural design. The museum is used for exhibition of the verb located at the Fukui Prefecture in Japan. The architect is Hiroshi Naito. A verb is an accumulated mud at the bottom of the lake, which shows the state of weather and climate condition in past time. A thickness of a layer per year is 0.7 millimeter. The mud has been accumulated for about 70,000 years in Suigetsu Lake in Fukui Prefecture. The total thickness of mud is 49 meter. This is a very rare phenomenon around the world. Architectural image and function was shown from the architect at the first meeting. The shape of the building building is a belt shape, which has width as 9.6 meter and uh, long to the 76 meter. Uh, this shape is determined to exhibit it above of 49 meter length. A material of the roof is requested to use wood of local area, which was requested by the client. A second floor is used for the exhibition space. Uh, there is an RC wall in the center, which divided the space as 6.4 meter and 3.2 meter. And the uh, first story is used for lobby and uh, purity to avoid the risk of fruit, the site is near the river. And the first story is unified with landscape. Oh, considering, considering architectural image, I recognize the problem of structural design. Firstly, as the building has a different scale of space and the structural member compared to first story and the second story. So I needed to consider a specific seismic design of this complex structure. Secondly, thinking about the relationship, RC wall and wooden roof is important. It is a symmetrical relation RC wall and roof. It realizes structural problem. And uh, the site is a very heavy snow region. I had to consider about heavy snow low depths as 1.8 meter. It is a severe condition for wooden structure. I introduced the process of a structural design of roof. Uh, this is a model shown by architect at the first meeting. Uh, this is a symmetrical structure, so it is needed horizontal stiffness. Uh, but because wooden structure is difficult to make a rigid frame, uh, diagonal members were needed. Uh, we 
talk about structural problem and uh, how to solve the problem. I researched several type of structural system from A to F type. The idea is placing diagonal member or placing tie beam. Type F uh, is a little strange. Type F is placed steel column embedded down the wall to resist horizontal force. Uh, this is a moment diagram of each type. Type B is the most efficient, but type beam disturbs architectural space. Type D and F is available for architectural design. Uh, this is the structural models type D and type F are made by my office. I discussed the architect about space image and mechanical efficient about these models. After discussion with the architect, combined system type D and F was selected. Uh, this is a selected model made by architect. Uh, but this system had another problem about earthquake resistance of the longitudinal direction. For the earthquake resistance of the longitudinal direction, uh, some diagonal members were needed in the red line section uh, to transfer the earthquake of load of the roof to RC wall. If the diagonal member were used, would connection members would be complicated. So we saw to use diagonal member with steel anyway structural system was complicated. I and the uh, architect to discuss again and uh, decided to change the structural system. Previous system uh, here uh, is composed wood members and RC wall, simple systems. And the improvement uh, system is to place steel members uh, between wooden roof and RC wall and complicated parts and composed with steel. Uh, this model are made by the architect office with this system, bigger wooden structure is felted to be supported by small steel members. And uh, this is the final model. Uh, this diagram shows structural system. The wooden roof is composed blue and beam and plywood panel. And the beams, diagonal members, and the columns are used steel member. Steel members are small size. RC wall and slabs are supported by a process beam of the second floor. I show the process of design. Firstly, as a model is shown from the architect office. Next, device model were made by both office. Uh, it added diagonal members. And this model was made after the discussion of first stage. The problem of asymmetrical was solved. And uh, after changing structure concept, this model was made by architecture office. And this is the final model uh, made by architecture office and my office. And uh, these models, uh, you notice the model made by architecture office are colorful, but the model by, made by uh, our office, uh, our stru uh, structural engineer is monotone. The difference is interesting. Uh, this is an interview of the exhibition room. Wooden roof structure is a simple arrangement. In the right side pot, we see seven members gather at this point. 
and the detail was beginning complicated. But the steel members are easy to make complicated detail. But this is an interview after arranging the exhibition. The exhibition zone separated by RC wall as 6.4 meter and 3.2 meter. The verb 49 meter is placed at the wall. Oh, this is out of view. The first story is open space and arranged as the entrance. The structure of the first story is 40.4 meter spanning placed with concrete frame right here. The building is unified landscape. Oh, this is a scenery in night. Uh, there is a cafe at the edge of the building. The wooden roof is felt floating. Uh, the changing of structure system arises a new attractive architectural design. Uh, next, I talk about education of structural design related with architectural design. The activity of structural design includes creativity and analysis. Creativity is individual thinking and analysis is universal thinking. Structural engineer judges and determines the design through these things. I think there are four skills for structural design. Uh, number one, interest in architectural design. Structural design is not structural analysis. It is unified with architectural design. It includes element of culture and art. Number two, knowledge of mechanics and material characteristic. This knowledge is important to think about the structural efficiency. And number three, balance thinking and judgment. Architectural design and structural efficiency are sometimes contradicted and the special structure and the cost is usually contradicted. Balanced thinking is needed for solving problem. And number four, a communication skill. Many kinds of professional people for design and for construction are related with the building. Structural engineer need to communicate many people. Education for structural design is held by university and design office. The training continuously throughout the whole life of engineer. A basic education is served in university. The education includes theory, analysis, and the experiment. Students learn how to solve the problem by theory on an analysis and how material breaks by experiment. Another practical education as modeling, balance thinking, and communication is done in design office. There are many issues to learn how to understand complicated structure, how to solve contradicted problems, and how to explain to another field people. A theory and analysis are easy to learn, so the education of these items in the university is useful. But creativity and judgment for design are not easy to run. So the education of these items in design office as a practical project is useful. Our next think about the education in university. There are many curriculums in architectural course in Japan. Architectural design and drawing, architectural planning for architect. A structural mechanics, structural design, material and construction for structural engineering, and building service, electric system or for mechanical engineering, and the history of architecture and others. Each course is separated. Students run basic knowledge of all courses. And most students selected specific field courses in the higher class. Students who want to be architect and engineer are separately educated in the higher class. And about structural design, a similar course of structural design is mainly calculation and determination of structural member. 
Now I introduce the trial of integrated curriculum structure design and architecture design in Tokyo Tech. I have attended one of architecture design and drawing curriculum for 20 years. The purpose of this course is to intrude structural thinking into architectural design and drawings. The theme of drawing is a building included large space, for example, sports facility, multi-purpose space, theater, etc. The student makes drawing and model. Drawing is requested plan, elevation, section, and partially structural detail. Model is requested architecture model and structural model. The scale of structural model is one by a hundred. This curriculum spends about eight weeks. This is a timetable. At first, I and an architect lecture about the theme. Once every week, I make individual advice to students. After four weeks, interim presentation and review are taking place. Our students think architectural design firstly and think about the structure design next. A student made a sketch of a drawing or a simple model to have advice individually. Some student brings personal computer and shows 3D modeling. At interim presentation, students talk about architectural design and structural design. In this stage, many students are bewildered about structure, but they gradually understand the relationship form and structural theory. Some students want to know how much size of structure members, and some students want to know how to calculate the structural member. Finally, they finish drawings and models. I introduce my lecture for this class. I show them about real building, physical image, and mechanical model. Physical image is useful to understand mechanical image. Two people have a baggage with three methods. I ask a student which method is easy or which method is hard to keep the baggage. Student understands the relationship about the structural form and the stress condition. I talk how to associate real architecture to mechanics model and talk each form related stress condition as actual force and bending moment. I show three methods to approach of structural design of large space building. Form or shape of structure related with stress condition. Member composing also related with stress condition. And uh, member arrangement are related to stress distribution. Also, they are related architectural design. And show practical example de design by myself. As the left side up, is cross truss uh, structure for flat roof. The right side up is a single lattice shell structure. And the left side down is a beam string structure use wood and cable. And the right side down is composite structure. Center zone is truss structure. Perimeter zone is inclined lattice structure. I introduced the process of structure design of this architecture and show a structure model of these buildings. These models are made by my office. Anymore, I show basic mechanics formula. Now, this formula is very simple. The formula is shown the thrust of arch and the maximum code members actual force of trust. Uh, these are related to the formula of a maximum uh, bending moment of a simple supported beam. 
I want the student to understand the rise of watch of hate of trans of related stress order. Uh, this is a view of final presentation. Many teachers and the guest reviewer attend final presentation. Professor Abkama attend here. Students take many comments about not only architectural design, but structural design. And the structure model is very useful to discuss structure. Students learn from the discussion with another student drawing and model. Uh, these are structure, uh, structure models made by student. A trust structure, a shared structure, that's shared structure and that structure. And this is a composite, composite uh, structure model. Many kinds of structure models have been made. Uh, these are structure models uh, designed at the same location. Kinds of architecture are laminated park, traffic station and the museum, which includes large space. Each building has a different function and different structural system. Students learn how to fit structural design to architectural design. I think the significance of this curriculum, students have experienced effective relationship between architecture and structure. The student who wants to be architect has interest about structure. And the student who wants to be a structure engineer has interest about this architecture. All students felt something about relationship, architecture design and structure. Finally, I talk about a new trend about structure design and its education. Digital tools are developing rapidly. We easily use form making software, structural analysis software, combining line of and grasshopper. We easily take the analytical result about different shape structure. Uh, this is uh, for making design of a canopy and uh, uh, use software. Uh, and this is a result of op optical trust shape of the high school gymnasium. And the total height uh, of trust is fixed and the ratio of upper zone and lower zone is changing. I research influence of the ratio of height of structure to lateral displacement and vertical displacement. These tools are useful to study many types of structural problem and easy to analyze new idea. How to achieve structural design using these new tools is need attention. I wonder is it need to teach these techniques in the university? I think the problem of analysis by software, the unquestionable trust of the analysis result by software should be avoided. The result is one answer according to an initial condition. Simple analysis by single model or hand calculation is needed to understand the result. For example, this is a RC spiral sphere, a radius of 10 meter, a large spiral sphere, which stress condition is complicated. The right side here is the result of finite element model analysis. To understand stress condition analysis by simple model showed by left side done and compared. We can do structure design reference software result, but the structural software cannot determine the design. It is needed to inform students or young engineers not only how to use new software, but how to understand the result and judge. And this is conclusion. Uh, number one, collaboration structure engineer and architect is needed 
to understand each field. Number two, basic education for engineers should be served in university and practical education should be served in design office. Number three, education for structural design related with architectural design in drawing curriculum is useful, especially making structural model is effective. And number four, education about new structural tool must be considered. It is needed to inform how to understand by the result of by software. Uh, this is my presentation. Thank you for attention. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Kanebako. So please understand that uh, Japanese uh, uh, architectural education is uh, unique because uh, we are all the uh, architect student and uh, structural engineer student uh, starting with together. And uh, his uh, uh, the, uh, studio is including uh, uh, the, uh, the for the student is not divided into architects and the structural engineer yet. So uh, uh, his uh, lecture is a quite important uh, point that uh, uh, who is uh, interested in structural engineer or even for the architect, architect uh, to understand the, uh, the, what kind of a structure is uh, rational and uh, probably uh, quite uh, uh, connecting to the, uh, the talk with the person at the north and uh, we talk discuss uh, later. So uh, thank you very much again. Uh, so uh, uh, then uh, I talk uh, to want to move to uh, the third uh, presenter, uh, Mr. Uh, Zhou Jian, uh, who is the Chief Structural Engineer of ECAD, East China Architecture Design Institute. Uh, his, uh, 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 his work includes many uh, terminal buildings, as uh, Terminal 2 of uh, Pudong International Airport, uh, Terminal 1 2 in uh, Hongqiao Airport in Shanghai, and several super high rise buildings like a uh, uh, 530 meter uh, Tianjin Chou Tai Hook Finance uh, Center and uh, uh, 438 meter Wuhan Center. So please welcome uh, Mr. Dianzhou. Uh, thank you, Professor Takauchi. Thank you for your introduction. And thanks to all the audience for your attendance. Uh, I'm um, Zhou Jian from ICADI. Uh, I'm glad to have a chance to share my understanding and experience about architecture structure uh, integration in this symposium. And the topic of my presentation is uh, the practice of structure engineers participation in the architectural creation process. As structural engineers, we always hope the structure could play a critical role in the project and the structure, structure is worth, worthy of being directly exposed. And we all wish architects could have a good understanding on structure, uh, structure concept and start their design from a regional structure system. Structure system. And just like this uh, well-known um, projects that we often see in textbooks that resemble force diagrams, or at least uh, the, the architect is willing to listen to the opinions of the structure engineers and uh, modify their design based on structural requirements. Um, however, that is not the way most architects work. Uh, architects often start his design from a subjective concept or idea. And sometimes even the function of the building can be sacrificed to a certain extent to realize his initial ideas. Uh, normally, structure will not be considered in priority unless the structure is almost impossible to realize, uh, which is rarely happen. Uh, in fact, structural engineers have become accustomed to the way architects work and have found appropriate ways to uh, work with them. Um, because of this kind of cooperation between structural engineers and architects, uh, people generally assume that structural engineers are the unsung heroes realizing architects' uh, accomplishment. So they are saying that 
structure makes the beauty of architecture possible. Um, actually, this is only one aspect of the fact. Uh, another effect is. Do you have any uh, the uh, view, view for the uh, pictures? Oh, 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 sorry, sorry. <laughs> if so, I use. Sorry, sorry. Okay, so please change it to three. Uh, preview oh, so, slide show. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, maybe I will back to to, to, to this page. <laughs> sorry. Uh, uh, as structure engineers, we always hope the structure could be uh, could play a critical role in the project and the uh, uh, structure is worthy of being directly exposed. And we all wish architects could have a good understanding on structure and concept uh, and start their design from a regional structure system, uh, just like these well-known buildings we often see in, in textbooks that resemble force diagrams or at least he is willing to listen to the opinions of the structure engineers and modify their design based on structures requirements. However, that is not always in the way architects work. Architects often start their design from a subjective concept or idea. Normally structure will not be considered in priority unless the structure is almost impossible to realize, which is rarely happen. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, structure engineers, engineers have become uh, accustomed to the way architects work and have find appropriate ways to work with them. Um, because of this kind of cooperation between structure engineer and architects, uh, people generally assume that structure engineers are the unsung heroes realizing architects' accomplishment. So they are saying that structure makes the beauty of architecture possible. Actually, this is only one aspect of the fact. Another aspect uh, that often neglected by public is that no good structure can exist in isolation from the architecture. Without mm -hmm. the approval of architect, any structure expression has no chance to mm -hmm. be implemented. Uh, structure engineers are also accomplished by architects. Uh, great structure engineers are all uh, recognized through their great projects, cooperation with architects. Uh, architects and structure engineers support and achieve each other in good projects. Uh, to achieve a perfect integration of architecture and structure, um, it is very important to put the structure concept into the architecture creation in the early stage. And, and this can be this can be the architect's initiative to integrate the structure concept into the design by himself or the early participation of structure engineers. And this picture shows the trend of structure inference in various stage of the project in, arch in architecture um, structure integration, uh, which the early stage has the most powerful inference. And to integrate into the architectural creation process at early stage, and structure engineers need to understand the perspective, perspective of uh, architects and to communicate 
wisdom in the way that they used to. So that the architect is willing to listen to you to, um, accept, to accept your opinions. Uh, in in Chinese previ uh, previous education system, structural engineers was focused on its own specific profession field and don't learn more about architecture. So structural engineers communication ability with architects is relatively weak. Uh, in response to this situation, uh, we made an attempt to build a structure creative team in structure department uh, two years ago. Mm, the team aims to, uh, to the cooperation with the architects in the primary stage, mm, hoping to achieve better integration with architects in more projects. And at the same time, uh, create an atmosphere for the structure engineers to cultivate the architecture um, perspective. Uh, now I will introduce some of the practice that this team participate in architecture uh, creation. And the phrase uh, um, architecture creation here only refers to the visual effect of the building, not the generalized architecture design. Uh, currently, the project we have involved is mainly in large Spain structures. Uh, where the need and opportunities for structural expression are relatively large. Um, based on the level of structural engineers' participation, uh, these works can be divided into uh, three types. And the first uh, is um, that the architect already had a clear idea about the form of the building and its details, um, but uh, the realizing process is restricted by structure uh, feasibility. Uh, we have to solve the structural constraints by partially develop the uh, architect's initial idea. And the uh, first example for this is the facade of uh, Terminal 2 building in Kunming uh, Airport. And the archi uh, architect want to have a single layer cable supported curtain wall to make the elevation transparent and clear. Uh, however, there, is a, there are two conditions that make the realization of this goal particularly difficult. And the first uh, is that the lower end of the curtain wall is not directly connected to the floor. And there is a horizontal skylight between them and the cable with huge tension, tension required by the single layer curtain wall uh, has no direct uh, fixed point at the low, uh, lower end. Mm, the second is that mm, the top of the curtain wall is, la uh, is a large spin truss uh, to withstand the, the maximum tension force as high as um, 700 kilonewton per cable, and the, uh, the structure uh, with the mac um, with the maximum um, span of 90 meters needs to be greatly uh, strengthened, uh, which is too costly in terms of um, economics and uh, visual uh, effects. The solution we um, provide was uh, first to add steel bottom beams on the lower end of the cable and then set uh, uh, liver beams and the hinge, uh, hinged bracings with 18 meters uh, interval between this, two, uh, this bottom beam and the uh, roof truss to internally balance the force caused by the cable. And the uh, Spain of the roof truss is uh, uh, to withstand the cable tension was reduced to uh, 18 meters. So the cross section caused by the cable force is uh, acceptable. Uh, acceptable. Mm. The bracing is one meters away from the uh, curtain wall 
to accommodate the displacement of the cable due to wing load. And the lever beams are hinged connect to the floor edge to reduce reactions at, act on the floor structure. And this arrangement emphasizes the force transmission pass and create an opportunity to uh, expression of structure members and um, details. Well, we think it's good both for structure and the architecture. And this is the final effect of the curtain wall from interior. Uh, although these bracings are not exist in architect's original scheme, uh, their appearance seems to be in harmony with the overall effect. And the second example is a um, pedestrian bridge. It's a pedestrian bridge with canopy in Baise, uh, Guangxi province. And the uh, um, architecture scheme is inspired by the uh, traditional silver, silver uh, headwear of male ethnic group in that region and the shape of a Vietnam bamboo bridge. Uh, it is an, an typical um, stay, a cable state bridge supported by cable net structure. Uh, to ensure a pedestrian has a bet, have a better views, the distance between the lower end of the cable is about three meters from the edge of the bridge. Uh, to reduce the obstruction of pedestrians by the landing cable, uh, a vertical pier is set uh, on the bridge deck and the uh, lower end of the cable is fixed on the top of the pier. And this is the uh, uh, this is the shape of the cable net that the architect internally determined by projecting a planar grading on the arbitrary curved surface. Uh, it can be seen that each cable is a flat curve, and the shape of the curve will change after it bears the tension until it forms a new balance with the intersection cables. Uh, at this time, the, the overall shape of the cable net would be changed. And there is a large force difference on the two sides of each intersection. And in order to maintain this force difference, it requires the cable clamp at each intersection and can provide sufficient compression force. And the size required for the cable clamps are as big as this. Obviously, this is a clear gap between the final result and the architect's expectation. And the suggestion provided by us is to change the arbitrary determined cable net surface into an ideal saddle surface. Uh, using the road surface character characteristic of the um, saddle surface. Uh, we arranged the cable in, uh, in the cable in its road direction so that all the cables are in straight lines and the shape of the cable uh, uh, can retain the same after being pre-stressed. And there is, um, basically no difference in the cable force on the two sides of each intersection. And the function of the cable clamps is, on, is only to avoid relative shaking between cables and, and don't need to provide much pressure. So their appearance is uh, roughly looks uh, as small as this. And the initial form of the cable Net and the simplicity of the connection can be guaranteed. Mm, the peer connection, the lower end of the cable and the bridge deck can also be replaced by a cable and its direction mm, can be determined by the direction of the uh, resultant force of all the cables intersected at the knot. 
Uh, in this project, we slightly change the shape of the cable net and uh, the architect selected and the rearranged cables um, and achieve the force flow simplicity and the compactness of the connection, uh, which is important to the final effect of the bridge. The second category is that uh, the, uh, the architect had, uh, had, uh, had already had a general concept about the building, but uh, have no clear solutions. Uh, structural engineers uh, involved in and developed the concept uh, together with the architect. The first example uh, of this is the design of the roof of Hohot Airport. Mm. The architect's intention is to visualize the character of a traditional yacht in the terminal through a modern approach and the true two elements as, uh, as the objects of expression, mm, the diamond grid and the skylight. Uh, for a relatively flat roof, um, um, truss is an economical uh, structure form. Uh, there is no difficulty in express the first element, the diamond grid. Uh, it can be realized by the arrangement um, direction of the truss. And the crease, increase in the spin caused by the uh, overlapped arrangement of the main st structure can be uh, compensated by adding more columns. Uh, however, the setting of the skylight put the architect in a dilemma. If the skylight is placed uh, on the grid between the columns, the structure can be easily realized and the skylight can be also be very uh, transparent. But the architect think this is not enough to highlight the feature that the yard's uh, skylight is at the center of the vision. Uh, if we can set the skylight on the uh, uh, top of the column and the column that is directly illuminated by the um, light uh, will attract more attention to the skylight, uh, which can strengthen the um, position of the skylight as the visual, uh, send the visual focus point. Uh, however, the bending moment will be the largest at the top of the column for a continuous truss member. And the cross section is also the largest there. And the large cross section will greatly affect, uh, affect the presentation of the skylight itself, making people unable to think of the skylight of a yacht. Uh, we tried various methods to reduce the cross section of the truss on the column top, uh, including uh, uh, reducing the end of the truss and the hinge to connect. Uh, with the column, but the effect was still not um, satisfied, satisfactory. Uh, uh, in the end, we were inspired by the tensioned roof of the Munich Stadium. And the rigid members at the column top were completely eliminated. And uh, the main truss uh, ended at the position of the truss around the skylight and the column is extended out of the roof and, is, and the stay cables are set on the top of the columns to suspend the truss around the skylight. Uh, uh, in this way, the skylight is completely transparent uh, and the uh, readily, readily arranged cable, cable looks more uh, similar to the yard skylight. Uh, the skylight is covered with uh, uh, ETFE membrane air pillows to reduce the numbers of secondary structures and make, make it uh, more transparent. Mm, directly illuminated by the light, the importance of the architectural expression of the column is highlighted. Since the cross section of the column is mainly determined by the uh, little no resistance requirements uh, under the uh, 8.5 magnitude earthquake, the column that jointly provided the little no rigidity can't be made too small. 
Uh, so we designed a swing column for each skylight. Uh, uh, this is simply, uh, which is simply hinged up and down and does not participate in the retinal uh, resistance. And the cross section can be uh, quite small, uh, 0.6 meter at the uh, two ends and 1.5 meters in the middle. Uh, this is the view of column top and the state cables. Uh, the swing columns have no retinal rigidity and their uh, weakened rigidity are compensated by increasing the number of surrounding um, retinal resistance resistant uh, steel columns. These columns are close to the curtain wall or in the uh, position that separates different spaces, uh, which will not affect the overall effect. Uh, this is the exterior of the terminal. Uh, we also can feel a sense of yacht from its uh, uh, convex skylight. Uh, in this project, we developed the concept of uh, uh, yacht together with architects based on um, structure concept. And the second example is the bidding proposal for Jinan Exhibition Center. Uh, the the architect's original concept was a paper folding and use a PTFE membrane as the covering material to achieve the light uh, transmittance. Uh, since the roof edge is straight, uh, the suitable structure is a truss or other kind of rigid structure. For a membrane covered structure, a rigid structure may look a bit messy from inside. So we propose to adjust the building outline from a straight line to a concave curve uh, so as to realize the possibility of a tension structure. Uh, suspension cables is directly arranged on the roof, uh, roof ridge and the two ends of the, of the suspension cables are anchored to the ground through struts. And the uh, front struts are arranged around the border of the inclined eave. The suspension cable and the shuttle shaped truss at the bottom act as the boundary of the uh, PTFE membranes. And the cord of the shuttle shaped truss can also balance the horizontal force of the front and the rear struts. And because the span of the membrane is more, more than uh, 30 meters and the demand for pretension on the membrane surface is too large. So we reduce this demand by setting secondary cables. Um, although this um, proposal did not win the bid in the end, uh, we feel that the integration of the architecture and the structures reflect quite well in this proposal. Uh, the third type is that structural engineers involved in architecture creation more actively. Uh, we present our own architectural schemes on part of the building based on the structure perspective uh, and, and compete, and compete with the architect scheme uh, so as to inspire the architects and to come up with uh, better solutions in, in, in the end. And the first example for this is, is the roof of an uh, equestrian arena and a grandstand roof um, with a nearly 30 meter, uh, meter cantilever. Um, because the height of the rooftop is strictly limited, uh, a cantilever truss is true for the structure. And the architect wants the structure to be exposed directly, um, but uh, the exposed effect of a conventional truss looks too simple and not enough to match the elegant style, uh, style pursued by architects in this arena. Uh, and therefore, um, combine the function, functional characteristics of uh, equestrian and uh, force flow characteristic of cantilever structure. Uh, we propose uh, a truss form that uh, with 
uh, dense parallel web members around the whole Spain. Uh, and this structure system is very similar to the whole skeleton in visually match the function of the equestrian. And we add uh, additional diagonal web members uh, near the uh, main structure. And uh, the diagonal members, web members are next to the parallel members inside, inside and will be painted in different color uh, uh, so as to be uh, almost invisible to a certain extent. And this is the, uh, okay. and this is the final effect of the truss. Mm, uh, the explo truss give a sense, give, gives a sense of uh, sequence and match the elegant style um, requirements of architect. Um, and the scheme is quickly recognized by the architect. And the second example um, is a mid Spain double deck pedestrian passage uh, in the departure hall of Taiyuan Airport uh, with a span of uh, 26 meters. We think a passage of this size is suitable for an interesting structure display. Mm, inspired by the uh, Peppero Riverside footbridge in UK, uh, we designed the upper passage as a hive through arc bridge and suspend in the lower passage from the upper deck. And the lower deck act as the balance member of the arch. Uh, so that the floor structure at the two ends does not have to bear additional horizontal force. And the arch structure is inclined outwards to show the dynamic characteristic of the structure. And the way the upper deck be supported also creates opportunity, opportunities for the expression of Mm, the structure. Uh, we are very satisfied with the scheme and showed it to the uh, architect with confidence. Uh, uh, but uh, it's a pity that in the end, the architect thought um, that the arched element did not con mm, confront to the style of the entire uh, terminal building and uh, reject this, this proposal. Mm. Uh, uh, here is the uh, all the examples I uh, what it's, uh, what introduced, and uh, finally I will give a conclusion uh, 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 that I get from um, these um, these participations. Uh, the first is uh, the integration of structure and uh, architecture does not mean that uh, structure part must be uh, exposed and displayed. Mm, the specific approach is based on the characteristic of the project and uh, uh, the overall consideration of the architect. Uh, uh, it's not the fact that the more structure is displayed, the better the integration of the architecture and the structure. Uh, and the second, uh, it does not mean the more structure engineers get involved, the better result will come out. Um, the involvement of structural engineers will inevitably restrict the uh, free imagination of the architects. So act as a um, complementer is a more ideal status for an architect who already has a good understanding of structural concept. Uh, his imagination will not go too far from structure, uh, structure principle. Uh, as this time the structural engineer can be involved a bit later um, and uh, or can um, involved as the um, architect required. Uh, but for an architect with weak structural concept, uh, early involvement is uh, uh, critical. Uh, um, the third, uh, uh, taking the structure as the starting point to design architecture is also a very interesting approach to um, architecture creation. Um, 
uh, an ingenious and uh, expressive structure is often worthy of being the reason for the uh, establishment uh, of the scheme. Mm. Uh, that's all of my presentation. Uh, uh, thank you for your attention. Thanks. Thank you very much, Mr. Dojian. Uh, it's uh, quite impressive and amazing, uh, uh, beautiful structures, uh, example uh, to keeping the uh, rationality of the structures. Uh, we also uh, interested in the how uh, you can uh, you could lead the architect to for the uh, the rational of structural system. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, uh, the, we are moved to uh, uh, the final of uh, uh, the presenters in uh, uh, this module, uh, Professor uh, Tony Konik. Uh, who is a professor of uh, design of structures at Art Alt University in uh, Helsinki. He studied architecture and mathematics, and his research is focused on the in integrative design method at the uh, uh, intersection of architecture and engineering. Uh, prior to joining Art University, he was teaching and conducting research at the uh, A School and, uh, uh, in London, ETH Zulich and the Institute of Experiment Architecture at the University of Innsbruck and the Singapore University of Technology and Design. He has been lecturing a museum at the Guggenheim Museum, uh, Bilbao and uh, MoMA in New York. Please welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. Sorry, um, hope you all can see now the presentation. Yes. So. So first of all, thanks to the organizers for the invitation to this event. I'm, I feel really honored to be here today, even though only virtual. And um, I will, in the next 30 minutes, I will present a little bit the, uh, my ideas about um, an architecturally oriented approach to structural design, kind of an approach that uh, I'm using in my own design work, but also um, in consultation to other engineer to other architects respectively, especially in the teaching that I do now. And um, I think uh, the main feature of this approach is that it's based on an, a graphical approach to inner forces. And uh, I will try to describe a little bit how, I, how this kind of uh, approach forces a specific form of design thinking with respect to the use of structures. And I think to, to start this, I, I start maybe not with an architecture, but with a small design task that um, we did at ETH Zurich, uh, which is this kind of conference table. And um, I think the main feature of this table was in some way to be a true table. And what I mean with this is that the notion of table has its origin in the Greek uh, work of Dishos, which means this, so basically, a table wants to be only a horizontal tabletop, nothing else. Where if we, if we look around, most of the tables that we see that are designed often are especially kind of characterized by <laughs> the thing that is under the table. So the legs and the support structure. So what we really try to do is, can we design a table that is just a table? So basically just a horizontal plate as a concept. And so that's what you see here as a result is our kind of um, conference table that is seemingly floating in space. And obviously it's not floating like uh, uh, Professor McDonald already pointed out in his first lecture, we have to obey physics. So there is something holding it up. Um, so what we see with this is that all our visitors to, to, the, to this kind of room normally go down on the ground to understand how this table works. And so, yeah, it's kind of looks like this. Maybe from the side you see better. So in some way you see that from the idea to make a seemingly floating table, we of course have tried to, on one hand, reduce the structure as much as possible. And at the same time, push it back as far as possible. So we have this large cantilevering element that at least from a perception seems seems to float in space. Um, the results of this, for example, of the attempt to reduce it to the min minimum is on one hand working only with primarily with axial forces and only also in a way that each of these elements that is under the table now really kind of fulfills one specific functions like, for example, the 
crossing cables that are taking care of horizontal forces. The cables in the back basically take care of the rotation that happens through the asymmetry. And then we have only one uh, compression element left that really takes care of keeping the build, keeping the, um, the plate basically up. So it all the compression forces are concentrated in this one, one element only. The result of this kind of approach, obviously, is that we have to concentrate the forces in, in one point, and that is what is then visible in the table top it's itself. It's just the kind of cantilevering arms that reach out to, to, on one hand, collect all the forces to bring it to one point, but also introduce a kind of specific dynamic into the table that uh, works quite well with with the rather with the linear um, structure of, of the wood plate. So we get a kind of dynamic visually where the, the structure that really is pushed through the tabletop uh, made visible is kind of interacting with the, the table the tabletop itself. Um, clearly this has consequences you all know we have worked out this structure in such a way that really using in some way techniques that you normally would use in a larger really building scale, like overforming the structures, uh, the, the steel structure in the production so that through the tensioning it in on, on side, it would kind of really get perfectly horizontal. Obviously, we have changing the, the, the profile in its thickness, so it's um, adapting to kind of the real inner forces that we are having. And so this way, it's a quite a elaborate project, which also <laughs> at the final point, one, one distinction, one specific thing is this table cannot be moved really, because the forces are to the concentration are that high that obviously we had to anchor the cables, but also the column down to through the the ground onto the concrete, which means we had to drill in into it. So this is uh, kind of the, the conse consequence. But I think um, what I'm especially trying to, to show with this example is that I think the attitude that I have with designing structures is it's not about calculation, but rather about uh, provoking a form of design thinking, where especially the idea is that structural principles are enhancing kind of the design idea. So really what I think several speakers have already mentioned now, an idea that the structural ideas are combined with architectural thinking and that often requires obviously to be very, very early in the design process involved to have a possibility to get into a fruitful dialogue between structural ideas and um, architectural concepts and based on this i think we what we had done already at the eth where we have been for a long time but also in recent years now at alta university is to provoke a design um, teaching that follows in some way the idea of pierre louis Gineri, where he mentioned that i think the idea of working with series of structures is not something that you that fosters really the design thinking so really works in a formative stage of the design and what we need at that point is often a rather simplified form of understanding of, of what's going on in structure so that we can work with this in in a productive way and that's why we had decided in developing the teaching for architects um, or a structural teaching for architects to work with is a kind of um, graphical approach to structures where it's really about working with forces construct kind of how they interact and through this develop an idea that um, where you just the, the architecture is there to guide the forces in space and according to, to the needs that, that we as architects then have. So that means we, we, um, we, uh, we uh, kind of activated a way of thinking of a graphic statics that has its origin already in, I think, uh, 
the 19th century work of, of Kuhlmann, but reactivated this in a much more uh, kind of uh, um, diagrammatic way. So it's really moving from, let's say, the analytic approach where forces in all directions or moments are calculated to get an equilibrium working instead with a very simple um, geometric rules that are equivalent to this. And uh, so this foster a form of understanding of the inner forces in a structure that in some way allows to understand how um, changes in form relate to changes in forces and vice versa. And you get a kind of in very close parametric relationship between these, these two things uh, where you understand how they are coupled to each other and how form and forces interact in a kind of dire direct way. And everything can of what we need here can be constructed in a kind of geometric language that is very close in some way also to an understanding that uh, and the education that an architect normally has. So to show how this just as a practice how this works, I'm just showing another kind of table we have designed there. Um, yeah, so instead of using pavilions like many other groups, we have started to work on tables as a test case. And there is another one, uh, kind of a small meeting table for discussions where you can uh, discuss here, you can uh, draw on, on the wall, you can store a little bit stuff. So all these kind of functions uh, that you would like to have. And um, we were uh, starting from a cantilever here you see kind of the as a sketch this kind of can, cantilever in a, the inner forces in a simplified way with compression tension in 3d and then by working now in with these forces moving them around back and forth you can in some way start to shape uh, a folded structure where these edge forces are represented by the, the forces that you are modifying. So you have a direct relationship between the, the shape you're producing from an architectural point of view, but also the consequences, how this relates to forces. And obviously we have also at some point looked at the end to, to calibrate everything to with a typical analysis, but you see already from these two, two pictures that the very rather call it diagrammatic uh, representations through uh, graphic statics is very close already and captures the main essential features that you would see then also in a more refined analysis. So which just um, kind of confirms that working with this, let's say, um, just a simple graphical approach is not really a kind of uh, unreliable simplification, but rather each of these forces is in some way is a resultant of a stress field. So it's kind of closely linked to a more advanced analysis. But as I said, it allows you much more easy to, to do more complex designs that also Sergio was made to use, for example, in all his kind of more complex folded structures that he had been doing in the 60s and 70s. And as I said, uh, for a more refined analysis, you can always re revert this and expand the, the forces that you're drawing into stress fields in a kind of discrete version to get in a more closed analysis and understand also the uh, kind of behavior along the, the surface if you want. But as I said, for the purpose or the main point that I'm trying to say is that working with this, um, let's say graphical approach is a way that allows very quickly to understand basic principles and, and start to use them in a design fashion. So like uh, simple ideas like the inversion of the flow from a hanging situation into this kind of arch-like situation, which then moves from tension to compression or variation of the support points in this kind of compressive situation where in some way you move from a typical, let's say, arch type situation where you distribute forces into, if almost into a situation of a column when the forces are on top of each other over to a cantilever. And this is a kind of smooth kind of variation from one system into the other that in a traditional 
teaching of structure typically is separated into different chapters. They have a chapter on columns and on beams and on frames and on whatever plates, where in some way you see talking about inner forces is not talking about the shape of the element that you're working with, but rather of the forces that you're moving around in space. And that is somewhere the way how you can then start to guide your design. So for and the advantage of these very simple diagrams is also yeah, you can combine them in some rather playful way, like, like doing these two cantilevers, combining them. And what you get in some way is a redirection of forces where forces, instead of traveling directly from top to bottom, you can move them first to the left and back to the right. And the consequence you see is the, the price that you basically pay for this is kind of this um, redirection of, um, for the redirection is this kind of gluing together of two uh, cantilevers with the, according with the you know, forces that you have there. So this way you can play quite flexible with on one hand rather metric operations or topological operations and uh, modifying kind of the force flow through space in, in, uh, in the sense with what you want to do from a designer point of view. And as I said, um, and that allows you then also to do quick things like, like you see here, and if you have a frame, you know, you have now to re redirect the forces to keep them inside a material line. That means you get this kind of quick sketch for how the forces distribute within, within such a frame. And knowing that you now have at this frame corner all these different forces of tension and compression, you are clear that you need more material to cope with the, uh, the stresses there than in other areas. So you can sketch very fast as something like an roughly an optimized shape that relates directly to these kind of force distribution. So you see a very fast play between inner forces, forms that relate to these inner forces and how you can combine this in a very fluid uh, design approach. So I said, you, yeah, all these shapes, of course, it's exactly what we know from uh, traditional, uh, from traditional analysis of this well-known example of a femur and how the inner forces relate to this. So I said, it just really shows again how this uh, simplification, seemingly simplification in, in this form is very much close related to the real analysis, if you want to say it this way. And um, this, this way of working is something that um, I'm uh, often also using in consultation with uh, architects when they approach me to for help, like in this project for the uh, library, new library in Helsinki, where I think the challenge was in for this building um, that it can be supported only at both ends of this building and the middle, the um, central part has to be kept free from any forces because there is a plan to, to uh, run the, a new metro line underneath this building. So we basically had the situation that this building had to be more or less considered like a bridge. And so it turned also out that the, the main structure of this building is, is this kind of arch that moves or a kind of pair of arches that moves from both sides. And the whole building is kind of uh, hanging mostly on, on this kind of structure. And for the architects, it was very difficult to understand that in this arch, we have also twists through the asymmetry. So we have not a pure arch, but also kind of a twist that makes all the detailing and visit kind of the planning for the spaces that are surrounding this structure very, very difficult. And so what this approach with graphic statics allowed you very quickly to do a model based on a funicular arch to, and then use, give this as a, basically a kind of grasshopper model very quickly so that they can play around with this and understand the structure consequences better and with this also how the consequences for the detailing of the, stru of the, the structure and with it kind of the, sp the spatial consequences are. So this is, an, is let's say, uh, custom made tools for the, ar for the architects to understand their structures better, which we can do with these uh, simple playing of uh, graphic statics in a, in a very fast way. 
other things that that is important to, to to do because it's a rather intuitive understanding of the force flow it's very appropriate uh, in uh, to work also for example with uh, artists and our department in, in archi of architecture is part of the art school so i have often to deal with uh, rather artistic projects like this one, which is a small pavilion for the World Economic Forum in Davos by an artist where uh, it's based on seaweed. Yeah, so the whole surface is kind of uh, algae, basically. And, um, and uh, what the effect is that in the, when it dries, the, um, the algae is kind of, get, the seaweed gets shorter in one direction, which basically means uh, we have here something like a, a post-tensioning process. So we have basically a, a, through this TV producing a membrane that get tensioned afterwards. And this was how we then um, used it also to develop a structural concept for this and the layout pattern for this different rib system that help the, uh, the artist to understand also better what are things they can do, what they can not do with the system, and how to, to move forward in a rather, let's say, artistic, artistic way to work with this. Um, other project I've been involved is this kind of experimental pavilion for the Gardens by the Bay in Singapore, where um, the whole idea was really to wrap a platform basically in rapid in, in forces if you want to say so the forces are forming a kind of hull that is wrapping uh, the, this platform into a kind of ephemeral, ephemeral uh, cloud-like um, surrounding and what we did with this graphic stacks approach is really also um, it's very um, easy to use in a computational setup because basically you work with, with simple forces and, and simple geometric rules. Here in that case, especially working with mostly with kind of tetrahedrons, which are the, the most simple shape of equilibrium of forces in, in 3D. And so combining this kind of tetrahedral blocks allowing to, to shape the, the building with the architectural ideas in mind, but at the same time guide the forces uh, through the space and start also in parallel syn synchronous with it a calculation, where is compression, where is tension, how big are the forces, which then obviously relates back into size, member sizes. And um, then uh, in, in the practical, Problem. I mean, in, the, in theory, you can bring all the forces into one point together. Obviously, in practice, you have to work out a knot. But using these ideas of uh, redirection of forces, we could very simply uh, introduce an idea or a rule how big the, the shell has to be in because all these knots are now 3D printed in metal. So it's crucial to understand what is the size of this immense, how big has the steel to be and so on. And so with this graphical approach, you could give a rather quick uh, kind of uh, rule of sums, if you want to call it how much uh, material is needed to, to shape these, these knots in a, in a safe way and provide geometric rules to, um, to do this. And that is very important because in this system, obviously each knot is different. And so we needed an automated approach to, to work out these kind of uh, not, not design in, an, in a safe way. And so this graphic approach helped to, as I said, relate form and forces in a very parametric way. And that also helps then to parametricize all these uh, knots in a fluid, fluid way, very simple. So these are typical, let's say, examples of, of consultation work where I'm involved. Um, in the teaching, I think what I'm trying to really also to, to emphasize is a kind of creative use of, of structure. And I'm going to show a couple of examples that try to emphasize a little bit how, um, how this is um, maybe, or, or what is the direction of this approach is like here in this example of um, um, by Mirales, the, the design for the 
reuse of a marketplace in, in Barcelona, where basically this large design, uh, this large roof was designed that covers the whole plaza, spans around, I think, 50 times 60 meters without any columns. So they are free to use it for, for the market inside. And so if you go in, you see that you have rather slim, but also bending kind of steel beams that run over this whole 60 meters and some, some cables running. And so if you start to think about this, you start to realize that what the, what the uh, together with the engineers, what the solution was is um, to basically um, support the, the, the long beams by hanging them uh, or basically lifting them up but through the hangers that are kind of hanging from arches that are spanning over the whole structure. And so this way you can keep the, obviously everything um, underneath without any column, additional columns, but also keep the, the size of the beams rather slim. So, so if you look again back here in the back, so you see how these um, arches peak through the roof which obviously is a solution that in the south of Europe, we can probably do maybe where I come from, Finland, that's maybe not the best solution to do, but in this warm climate, it's obviously a way to deal in a rather uh, playful way with, with these questions. Um, it's also, I think, to, at that point, uh, good to, to, to show that within this graphic approach, where we work basically just with inner forces, and um, we never really deal with, with bending because bending or bending moments, because the bending basically is a reaction of compression and tension being there in the same section at the same time. So we get this as a geometric effect. And, but we can still talk about this basically from a perspective of forces instead of calculating any abstract uh, moments, which means to, for example, uh, get these, um, uh, avoid bending within this beam, we clearly can see we could increase the height to in reduce the inner forces with this reduction of inner forces, obviously reducing the amount of bending. Or like I said, typical thing to introduce an additional column, which basically is a compression element, which also helps to reduce the inner amount of of uh, compression forces and with this the bending. But um, as I said in the example of, um, of the Mirales example of uh, in Barcelona, basically instead of pushing from below, you're just hanging from above. And I think with working with this uh, graphical approach where you see really plastic the kind of inner forces and um, such kind of moves playful moves of rethinking how you would solve this problem is a very easy task to do. And it, it kind of supports a form of playfulness to approach also on different form of solutions. And I think this kind of um, simple example is a little bit taken further in this example by the house by Christian Keretz in, in Zurich, where you see um, already in the first first view you see what is very unusual is that seemingly all the walls are on different places so what you use normally from housing design is that walls are on top of each other to have a clear flow of forces and uh, kind of structure that is feasible and uh, here suddenly all the elements which gets even more in the, clear in, the, in this model are in some way very different which allows the architect of course to make very variable um, apartment designs on each level, basically reacting a different way and providing different um, kind of uh, spatial solutions and allowing for a high flexibility. The way how this is in some way realized is really in some way taking this Miralis example a little bit further where you see combinations where like in the top left one, uh, a wall is really supported by two other walls. So you have basically a kind of beam-like behavior. Um, but we have also solutions where this wall is separated in two parts and then they are connected basically through the, the floor plates to form a sandwich that is then balanced on the lower wall, but also partially hanging often on 
on a wall that is above. So forces are moved uh, very flexible in all directions to form kind of these equilibrium situations. And this allows now to be this kind of understanding of the game allows the architect now to be very playful in the organization. Obviously at the end resulting like you see in the right in a rather complex distribution of uh, compression and tension through this whole system. But um, the, the understanding behind is so clear that this allows you now to combine the, the structural kind of implications with architectural intentions, yeah, resulting in very kind of open fluid spaces. So most of the apartments do not even have doors. Yeah, that makes it also even more required to shift the plates in space to form a flow of space that also does separations. And uh, yeah, you see things like this, far out, out uh, reaching uh, kind of open spaces that as I said, are now in that case, for example, supported from above. So this, this ceiling is hanging basically there. And uh, yeah, and if you understand all these things, what is also clear from a, in a graphic approach that the most simple um, element that, that I already showed before is yeah, following the physics of law is basically working with compression and tension, so arches and cables. And so the whole building is basically hanging there on four cables, which allows to get the whole lower floor, lower level, uh, free of any form of construction. So it makes it very easy a parking, parking garage. Um, I'm running out of time, so I will not go in much detail of this one, but uh, in this last example, I think similar, I just wanted to emphasize that with this understanding of moving forces around in space, you are also allowed to uh, set find new solutions for this kind of simple house where, for example, the roof is now supported by a flying uh, column and to, to release the forces from this column further, we have, we basically kind of produce um, kind of counterweights that take away a large part of the forces to the outside, which basically means in this approach that the whole outer hull, so the, the, the ceiling and the walls, outer walls are basically, as I said, counterweight for the roof. And they're not even touching the ground because they're just hanging there to, to allow the, um, the, the, the column in the middle to be as slim as possible. Yeah, allowing to form a specific design that I'm not going into detail with this, but important is here that through this, the um, structural concept is very, very much close in reliant with the architectural concept that is basically about having this in a church, this inner sanctuary protected by this kind of almost cloth like element that is wrapping around it and protecting the this. Uh, the, the inner kind of holy part. And at the same time through this, uh, providing additional spaces in, in between that are used as kind of support spaces for, for the church. So you get a kind of very close relation between structure, structural ideas and architectural ideas. And I think that is what, what we're aiming with this graphical approach to really move freely to allow structure and architecture to be close together. and would like to end with this kind of quote by Arthur Rueck that talks about these ideas with the notion of strong structures. And for him, strong structures are kind of load bearing structures that do not secretly fulfill their function by carrying load to the ground as discreetly as possible, but instead make architecture out of this kind of existential theme, namely this load bearing. So one which is in some way a drama that we kind of uh, really work out and with this, I would like to close. Thank you very much, and sorry for being a little bit longer. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Karnik. Uh, so graphic statics uh, used to be taught in uh, our structural mechanics uh, for the analyzing uh, structure in the previous time, but uh, now we are, uh, uh, I'm sorry that we have uh, eliminated because of uh, uh, computer analysis can uh, uh, do no need to uh, to do analysis, but uh, it's interesting to uh, uh, see uh, that uh, that is uh, uh, still uh, like uh, uh, the effective to understand the flow of the uh, forces. Thank you very much. So uh, uh, we are now uh, to uh, open to the discussion. 
uh, for the uh, uh, four presenters and uh, uh, for the uh, close to 30 minutes uh, we want to uh, talk uh, a little bit. Uh, I would set the, uh, three topics for the <coughs> structural engineering and the design. Uh, first is uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, how the structural engineer can contribute uh, uh, the SDGs or, or environmental impact. Uh, and the second one is a uh, collaboration between uh, uh, architect and the structural engineer relationship. And the third topic is uh, how uh, we can deal with the digital tools uh, and uh, to uh, overcoming or, or not uh, for the uh, uh, traditional uh, hand drawing or, or physical models. So firstly, uh, I'd like to ask uh, uh, Professor uh, McDonald that uh, uh, I, uh, <coughs> listening to uh, your talk, uh, I remember the Professor Mamoru Kawaguchi's talk that uh, uh, the digital uh, design tool is uh, losing sometimes for the uh, scale of dimensions and the uh, your talk of a free form structure could be uh, some kind of guilty against uh, uh, the, uh, the carbon uh, footprint. So, but I also uh, uh, understand that that is uh, depend on the uh, scales <coughs> because the uh, small ones are not so uh, we can do anything but the <coughs> for the large scales uh, uh, because of uh, uh, the square and the cube laws, uh, it's a more uh, big uh, impact on the environmental scenes. So, how do you think about how we can uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the contribute to the uh, SDGs or environmental impact? Uh, please comment. Start. Oh, well, um, I think the, um, the what I was trying to say is that. Um, if we're if we're going to make environmental impact mm. uh, uh, give it uh, some kind of priority, mm. uh, then um, we have to get the balance of complexity, which mm. produces efficiency in the use of material, mm. and simplicity, which makes the structural makes the structure easier to design and to construct. We have to get the balance uh, mm. appropriate. And uh, what I was saying was that one of the major factors that determines what is the most appropriate balance is the scale, is the span of the structure. So, um, and this is a knowledge, I think, which everyone involved with building needs to know. So that if you, uh, someone is designing a small scale uh, building, then the balance between complexity and, um, and simplicity um, uh, will be different. Uh, from a structure which is, let's say, 25 meters span, and the most appropriate combination will be different for 40 meters span, and so on. Uh, and uh, so I think that uh, for maximum economy of means, uh, the form of the structure and the way in which it's configured should be related to its scale. So simple post and mean structures, fine for five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 meters span, if the span is um, 30 meters, a more complex structure, something like a portal framework or a space framework. And if the span is 50, 60 meters, it needs to be some kind of funicular, curvilinear, cable net, arch, vault, that kind of structure. But what I was saying is that the the, the, the combination um, of simplicity versus complexity should be appropriate for the scale. So we should not be seeing um, complicated, uh, highly efficient structures used for small spans, mm. unless there is a special reason. And a good reason, of course, is if you have to carry the structure, such as put it on your back uh, as a tent to take it up a mountain. So you have a small scale structure, um, which is a, 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 a funicular structure used as a tent, uh, the most sophisticated, complicated kind of structure used on a very small scale, but there is a special reason for making a lightweight structure. If there isn't a special reason, if we're making a dog kennel, uh, then we don't need a highly sophisticated, very efficient structure for that on a small scale. Okay, thank you very much. How about the material? Uh, in uh, Japan uh, now, the uh, for the uh, fixing a carbon footprint, uh, the timber structure is uh, highly recommended to use. But the, we are facing to the kind of a trade-off of uh, sometimes a timber structure is weak for against uh, uh, the natural disaster like uh, earthquake or flood. So uh, how it it uh, it's, uh, selected in the material in the uh, balance? Well. Um... 
I, I'm not an expert in earthquake engineering, so, um, <laughs> but um, I can think of examples in Finland, for example, of very large structures. Um, the concert hall at Lati, I think, is an example of a very big building, which mm. is constructed entirely of timber. Mm. So um, I think I would say, and people are now building really quite high skyscrapers in timber. Mm. So, um, the the uh, compared to steel, timber is a weak material, but that doesn't mean that it can't be used for large scale structures. So I think um, my opinion would be we should be using more timber, and it's not true to say that we can't make large buildings from timber. We can. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so uh, uh, how do you think it, uh, uh, Professor uh, Janzo, uh, Mr. Janzo, how is uh, the uh, uh, environmental impact is uh, uh, taken into account into the Chinese uh, architecture. Uh, sorry, uh, it's uh, uh, in the, for the structural engineering. How you think about the uh, environmental impact and the, uh, how to recommend to architect? Uh, uh, I think the choosing of uh, an efficient structure uh, is the most important part of the um, like environment environmental impacting. That means we can use less uh, materials to build a more, uh, more architectural structure. That, 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 that's the fundamental thing, I think, the efficient structure. And the second, I think it's uh, selection of material. Yes, if we can choose uh, recycled materials or, or uh, high performance uh, materials, that means we also can save safe material yeah and that's okay thank you very much uh first at kanebako uh how do you think about the the uh to contribution to the environmental impact of the structure engineers oh i, I think uh, um uh, one is about the structural material and uh, uh professor takeichi said uh the wood is dangerous a wooden structure is dangerous, but uh, I don't think so. Uh, it depends on the design of a uh, wooden structure. Uh, the wooden structure is uh, weak materials and the joint is very difficult uh, to have a stiffness. So uh, wood is a, a very a kind uh, for our environment. So I uh, use a composite structure, uh, wood, was and steel are uh, reinforced concrete. So uh, it's a, a strong uh, structure uh, we can design. And uh, another uh, uh, viewpoint, uh, it is useful to use uh, building as long as possible for our environment. And the building made all is, is uh, sufficient to uh, seismic resistance capacity and because the code of seismic resistance have changed several times in Japan. So retrofitting and utilizing existence building is uh, uh, very useful for uh, environment, I think. Thank you very much. Uh, first, Akonik, any uh, the comment on the structural engineer's contribution to the SDGs? I mean, I, I think I very much uh, are in line with what uh, Professor Kanebago said that uh, I think they, um, it's not only about the material that you choose. I mean, I think uh, the questions of environmental impact are, are much, much larger. I mean, uh, I un understand, for example, when Professor McDonald said we would to save material, we make these kind of funicular shapes. But at the same time with this, we're producing much large, much more volume that, for example, for heating purposes, it's much more a different problem then. So I think uh, working in an environmental sense requires not necessarily to optimize a single, single aspect, but rather to open up in a much more intense dialogue with many, many other peoples and find a kind of well-balanced solution that takes in, in consideration many, many different aspects. So I think just trying to, to, to optimize one aspect um, would uh, will not necessarily lead to more environmental solutions. And I think that's uh, 
feedback, I would be there a little bit more. Uh, I think the situation is more complex because we have this time issue here, like I said. If we maybe use concrete, it might be for a CO2 first bed, but if we can use it for 100 years with some reuse and things like this, the environmental impact looks, the balance looks already very different again. So I think these questions are much more complex. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, so probably software engineer need to be more uh, learning about the environmental engineering also. <laughs> Thank you very much for uh, saving energy. So next uh, topics, uh, I'd like to touch on uh, the relationship uh, between architect and structural engineer. So uh, uh, Kanebako Sensei is uh, to teaching uh, for the architecture student and uh, the, also the, uh, the structural engineer together. So how uh, the, uh, the Chinese uh, uh, the education is, uh, do you feel uh, feeling uh, different from uh, uh, the Japanese one? Uh... Uh, in China, the, uh, for structure, uh, structure students, uh, when I was in university, I think I um, didn't learn anything, or just few things about architecture. So, so, so my understanding of architecture is learned from my working experience. But now uh, in universities, uh, they start to learn more uh, architects than we used to be, but um, compared with uh, Japan, uh, as as you explained before, I think still uh, the the um, we still too specific to the our own major and the understanding of um, our communication ability with 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 uh, uh, architect is still quite weak. Uh, also, in, for for uh, architecture students, I think it's. Mm, the same condition, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, first, Mark Donald, how do you think about uh, uh, educational or the uh, the characteristic uh, between uh, the European countries and the uh, Japan is a little bit different? Uh, I understand. Uh, how do you think is a uh, good uh, education uh, about uh, nations to? Uh, well, um, uh, in taking Europe as a whole, I think there's quite a variety. Mm. Um, on the continent of Europe. I think the integration of architectural and engineering education is quite good. Uh, in the in the UK, where, where I've operated, it, it really is not very good. Um, the uh, education of architects and engineers is really quite separate, although there are a few um, institutions and Edinburgh University is one of them, which run joint degrees um, mm. where architects and engineers are educated together. I have to say that um, in Edinburgh University, although we have a joint degree, we also have degrees where engineers uh, are educated separately and also other degrees where architects are educated separately, but we have also this one degree where they're where they're educated together. And uh, as someone who teaches in all of these degrees, I have to say that I find the students who are in the integrated uh, degree are more interesting to talk to. And they, they seem to be more involved in a general way with the, um, the whole business of building and all aspects uh, of it. And just reflecting back on what uh, Professor Kotnick was saying, uh, by the way, I agree with him that, um, that uh, one must not focus on one particular aspect, that the whole picture has to be, has to be taken. But um, uh, I think generally, uh, still, I would say architects and engineers in, in Europe tend to be separate individuals. And uh, this, is, um, this is regrettable. And, uh, and I think we will have to address this if we are going forward into the making of a sustainable kind of architecture. Thank you very much. How, uh, how about the continent uh, education, Professor Konik? Uh, you also experienced in Singapore or other countries? Um, yes, I mean, I have been around at many universities, but I think in general, I would, I would argue that uh, architecture education and engineering education is still running pretty much in two different worlds. I think we very rarely have really both uh, groups uh, taught together. And so um, I think we, we still have pretty much the separation and a lack of understanding. I think like it was described before already, we've been, when I talk to engineers often, they have hard times to understand what design thinking means and what, what the art engineering should relate to. And on the other hand, the architects that obviously have very much problem with anything that, that comes with 
numbers. <laughs> so they uh, have not were not very fond often of engineering questions. So we still have this very much of uh, of a of a gap, and in some way, what what. We have been trying at the ETH, but also where I'm now in Alto, or what we have tried to do in Singapore is really trying to uh, open up the courses to, to both discipline and inviting the others to, to join in for to understand. But uh, um, yeah, mostly I'm still teaching architects. The very rarely an engineer finds the way into the course. <laughs> mm. Okay, thank you. Could I, could I uh, ask Professor Kotnik a question? Yeah, please. Yeah, um, I, I was interested. I, I'm fascinated by your the way in which you're using graphic statics, and I think this is definitely a way in which engineers and architects can communicate. Um, but um, my experience uh, teaching architects has been that uh, as soon as one draws an abstract diagram, which is which is what you're using, um, the architects tend to switch off. Uh, if it doesn't actually look like something in a building, uh, they, they stop paying attention. And I'm just wondering what your experience of that has been. Once you start to, to use abstract diagrams, do you find that the architects are still paying attention? Yeah, yeah, very much, because I'm doing exactly what Professor Canibago was saying. I do a lot of connecting these abstract diagrams with body movements. Mm -hmm. So I yeah, do a lot of yeah, exercises yeah. in front of the students showing mm -hmm. kind of what it means, or I pull students forward to play, have kind of interaction with several students. And once they understand how bodies, physical bodies interact, and how this is translated into an abstract drawing, they, they start to understand this much better in some way. They, they start to relate it in an empath empathic way because they see that this abstract line actually means something they can feel if they start to think about it in, in a specific way. So what means compression and tension? And I think, but it's it's true, you have, it's very important to introduce this kind of level of abstractions in a way that it can connect to, to the knowledge of people. And then they they can, can uh, interpret this in a specific way. You cannot just start and saying, okay, this is a vector and now let's do it. And there, there is some, some work needed. That, that's very interesting. That's that's a very good point. Mm. Thank you very much. Okay, so we uh, we try to move on the final topic. So how to dealing with uh, uh, updated digital tools? So Kanaboko, uh, first Kanaboko, uh, it's uh, a little bit uh, criticized for the uh, to numerical or, or some kind of digital tools need to be uh, carefully treated. Uh, so could you uh, reinforce a little bit about that? Oh, uh, I say, uh, uh, I, I, I repeat, uh, um, the unquestionable trust of analysis result by so that should be avoided. Uh, so I, the um, important thing is uh, to inform student or young engineers uh, how to use not how to use, uh, only how to use, uh, and uh, uh, how to understand the result and judge uh, uh, to uh, understand that the result is a simple uh, model solution and uh, hand calculation is uh, needed. So I agree, uh, Professor Kotnik's uh, show uh, several example, FEM analysis and uh, a single analysis. I agree. Professor Konik, uh, still the uh, physical model is used for education in uh, your university? Um, we don't use in the education very much uh, analytic models because as I said, I'm trying to <laughs> make students understand what they do and not just calculate it. Hmm. But what we do actually is Taking, taking these, let's say, basic concepts when they understand how forces move and use this then, for example, to form a generative process. So program from a design perspective, the forces into the design and then use computational tools to generate complexity out of simple, simple principles. So 
the computer is mostly used in our teaching to 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 deal to transfer let's say basic ideas into more complex situation and handle the complexity but not necessarily as an analytic tool but really as a generative design tool so that's how we use it okay so uh, some uh, people is uh, to saying uh, that uh, computer analysis like uh, uh, grasshopper can be a uh, to effective mm -hmm. plan uh, how the effective the structure is and uh, so no need to for the physical model okay how do you think about the Professor McDonald. Me? I, uh, Professor McDonald. Oh, sorry. Um, well, I, I am a um, great believer in, um, in hand calculation methods uh, and uh, as uh, the way to really understand what is going on. Um, obviously, the um, digital computation is essential um, but uh, the hand the hand uh, calculation in order to maintain a few um, is is very important um, so uh, I agree with uh, was it I forget which of uh, which of the other professors um, uh, mentioned this was it um, uh, well anyway uh, I, I think hand calculation is is essential uh, the, um, the the digital computation um, should be um, the the limitations of it should be recognized. Okay, uh, how how is that in China Chinese education uh, cases, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Zhou? Mm. Uh, you mean uh, computation? Um, uh, analysis can uh, cover the uh, physical model or under. Uh, 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 physical model is 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 uh, I think is is uh, rarely used, but only for 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 some like some competition. You you, you know, we 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 do uh, uh, physical models for structure, but for for uh, structure analysis, uh, we we more based on on. on um, computer uh, computer software has to do do the do, do this analysis. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, one uh, the uh, the comment from uh, the audience that the first uh, Wada uh, is uh, uh, say some comment. Can you join? You you are discussing about computer analysis and hand calculation, but uh, you need to make some small test, structural test will be needed. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, uh, the, also uh, we uh, try to do the actual or uh, the uh, uh, miniature structure for the, to understand how the steel material, timber material is crafts or, or in the education, that is uh, uh, something difficult to uh, experience in the actual situation. So. Uh, that is a good point, I think. So, any other uh, comment or opinions uh, against uh, another presentation from the presenters? Okay, thank you very much for the uh, the uh, very valuable uh, opinion. So, uh, and uh, if you, if you have small time, oh uh, yeah, uh, fire problem for the structure we have to discuss. Mm, Professor Kanaboko likes wooden structure, but in the big city, there are many wooden structure, and the city fire happen. No, not we cannot stop the big fire. Please don't make many wooden structure in the big city. But mm -hmm. local place is okay. Mm -hmm. mm, Obayashi Takenaka, many company who want to direct to make more than 10 story wooden structure, but the fire, mm. they only test mm. the fire in the building, but the city fire is very mm. dangerous. Please don't forget. Do you have oh. any comment, uh, Professor? Oh, thank you, Professor Wada. Uh, uh, I know um, the one of the uh, problem of the uh, building is a uh, fire resistance system. So 
uh, I think uh, the wooden structure is used for low rise, uh, low story uh, structures uh, to escape easy, easy to escape people, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm. But not not so many under wooden structure in the city. Mm. In London, in the nine, uh, 1666, very big fire. After the 100 years, they make the wooden structure will allow in the inside of the building. Outside is mm. stone. Mm. More concrete. Mm. But, uh, Japanese uh, people forget the, the city fire. Okay, thank you very much mm. for the uh, the comments. So probably uh, we need to uh, to don't forget the physical law, as uh, uh, Professor Bakugura said that uh, we need to keep the balance for the uh, how to uh, optimize and uh, to uh, keep iron iron, uh, iron to the uh, the. Uh, any problem for the to go to the single uh, uh, the concept. So as uh, Professor Konik said, uh, we need to uh, have a look wider uh, the balance of the uh, uh, the, uh, the powers. I think. Okay, thank you very much. The time is also uh, already uh, the running out. So uh, thank you very much for the nice discussion. And uh, we want to uh, uh, try to close uh, module one. And uh, so we have uh, now uh, the 50 minutes uh, the, uh, the uh, interval rest uh, for the taking for your or the short meal or uh, the, the dinner. And the, for the uh, then uh, we are uh, to uh, would like to open again in the, uh, six o'clock in the Japanese time. So 15 minutes later for the module two. Thank you very much for all the presenters.
uh, Professor Gay, uh, are you here? ちょっと喋ってもらって、その後、岡山先生から、あの、モデレーターをしてもらって、っていう感じでよろしいですか。いいですよ。そしたらまずあの、ガ先生に、あの、最初にまずあの、えっと、レン先生のスピーチをします
Okay, shall we restart? Yeah. Now we start. Uh, thanks a lot for the host of Professor Takuchi. And also, very sorry, uh, because something wrong for internet. Professor Ren Jiawei uh, missed the opening ceremony. Now we welcome him to make a speech. Professor Ren Jiawei is the secretary of CPC SU School of Architectural Party Committee, also a well-known expert in architecture, specializing in public buildings and uh, urban design. I welcome Professor Lin. Hello, I'm sorry. There's, there was something wrong with my Zoom just now. Now I have to use my mobile to enjoy the meeting. A very good day to all respected professors, experts, and attendees to our symposium. I'm Leng Jiawei from School of Architecture, Southeast University. As one of the organizers of 2021 International Academical Symposium on Architecture Design Research, I uh, help be represent the School of Architecture, Southeast University, to express sincere gratitude to in every personnel involved to organizing this symposium and all to distinguished guests attending today. The Archineering Design Research Center has started to annual international academic symposium since year 2017. Despite on the different difficult pandemic situation, it is very inspiring to see the through this symposium to playing this it is role to strive for academic exchange and communication. Being a, integration of architecture and engineering. Engineering, design, and research aims to research on the merging of our conventional uh, techniques with the latest advanced technology. At the same time, the Engineering Design Research Center is a significant achievement of the cooperative and supportive relationship among our School of Architecture, Tokyo Institute of Technology and uh, uh, East China Architecture Design and Research in Institute. We hope that this high level uh, academic, academic platform will facilitate in our uh, discipline advancement and uh, in our uh, con continuation of Friendship. Uh, last but not least, I send best wish for the successful and fruitful international academic uh, symposium today. Also, it, this is uh, this is uh, wishes for that being. Thank you. Thanks a lot for the speech of Professor Lan Jiawei. Now we please invite famous architect, Professor Okuyama to preside over the second session. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for introducing me, Professor Geramin. So my name is Shinichi Okuyama. I'm a Japanese architect and now teach architectural design and theory at Tokyo Tech. 
I will play a role a moderator of module two in this symposium. So to not only panelists, audience, if all of you would cooperate with our special proceedings, I would appreciate it so much indeed. Module one was so-called an engineer's part. Compared with that, and this session can be called an architect part. So uh, this time we invite so wonderful four panelists. Uh, one is from Shanghai, China, Mr. Go Imin. One is from Beijing, China, Mr. Li Shingan. And one is from Tokyo, Yokohama, Japan, Mr. Jun Yanagisawa. And the last one is uh, from Barcelona, Spain, Mr. Enric Masibosh. Mr. Go, Mr. Li, Mr. Jun, Mr. Enric. I uh, thank you very much for all of you to accept our proposal indeed. So each panelist is allotted 30 minutes for speaking. And after finishing every presentation, we follow the discussion time for more uh, about 30 minutes. Is this okay? So should we start? So first speaker is Mr. Go Emin. So I introduce him. The Mr. Go Emin, uh, he is a uh, Chinese architect and uh, scholar reading the next generations. And now full-time pro associate professor of School of Architecture in Southeast Universities. And he is also the chief coordinator of Engineering Design Research Center established by Southeast University, AKB, and Tokyo Tech. So uh, is it OK? Are you ready? So we are welcome to Mr. Go Emin. Is it okay? Okay. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Okay. Hope you hope everyone can see my presentation. It's okay. Uh, not yet uh, showing. Would you show us on the slide? Yes, I I have shown. No, it's not there. Uh, yeah. Not not coming yet. <clears throat> To use the uh, green uh, the button. Okay. So please wait. I'm sorry. Okay. It's, it's okay. okay. It's okay. Yes. Okay. okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot for the introduction from Professor Oyama and uh, the attendance to our symposium. I'm Go Yiming from South uh, South uh, School of Architecture, Southeast University. And uh, well, as the first speaker of the second module, I would like to move the angle from structure to architecture to introduce something on teaching of architectural design in Southeast University uh, from the view of architecture. So my lecture title is uh, teaching framework in uh, teaching uh, teaching framework architectural design in South uh, Southeast University. Uh, well, in this architecture field, we are much used to talk about the structure. Yes, it is still challenging to describe precisely uh, what structure is. So firstly, I would like to share my opinion to everyone. Uh, instead, instead of giving structure a definition, I prefer thinking of uh, architecture. The later appears to be more architecture, not engineering. When decided the structure form, there are a lot of factors. After all the considerations, the resulted the structure form seems to always have the following three characteristics, performance, presence, and sense. They range from engineering field to architecture field until they form the final structure. For engineering field the structure could be designed from performance to presence. For architecture field the structure could be designed as sense or presence. The intersection of these two fields is stopped at the physical form. Obviously, this is structure presence. It reminds us to think of the structure expression styles uh, with uh, formalistic approaches in recent history. Hoping this showing figure is easy to imaginable and understandable. 
it is the fundamental principle in our, uh, in modify our curriculum for engineering design in our school. How to consider structure form, a structure from an angle view of architecture? I think this book has taught me much more about this uh, structure, the essence of architecture, wrote by American educator, author, Professor Forrest Russell Wilson in uh, 1971. In the preface of the book, the author wrote such a paragraph. Architecture combines external form and internal space, structure and the material into one instance. The structure of the building can be explained and the strength of the material tested, but the spirit of the building, its form and spaces must be felt in much the same way the ancients sensed the spirit with, within the form of rocks and trees. Beyond those mathematics or physical formulas and the theorems, I think that human body and the feeling are the most important annotations of structure. Gustav Eiffel's two well-known masterpieces, the Eiffel Tower in Paris and the Statue of Liberty in New York, uh, presenting a different image of the relationship between structure and its form. No matter which shows the extreme phenomenon of the structure expression, completely exposed or completely hidden. From this, we can also realize the bondage of expression between structure and the form. Among the rest, architectural design is considerable integration with structure and the architecture. We have mentioned on the meaning of architectural design in our publicity materials and the posters. Actually, Akinari design is a word created about 10 years ago by the Japanese structure expert, Professor Masao Saito. Though it is said that Helm Jen and uh, Werner Zobeck had already used the word in, 20, in, 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 in 2000 as the title of the book. The only difference is that the letter didn't use the word design. But I think the design is very important uh, connection to make structure and architecture uh, work together. However, it is undeniable that the engineering design refers to the integration of architecture and the structure. This important integration is included in our teaching curriculum of engineering design from undergraduate to the master level. In the formation of our teaching curriculum of engineering design, we consider a graduate learning from performance and going deeper into sense and an understanding of abstract design with its physical construction and materials. The fundamental of structure such as the mechanics and the selection of structure forms are taught during the under undergraduate first and second year. The integration of uh, structure into architecture architecture design started to be taught in the third, third year. Why from the fourth year onwards to the master levels, there are specific design schedule to research on the set topic. Each grade teaching has its own goal to be achieved with a step-by-step -step development from structure performance to sense. Third year's design studio focus on the base basic formation, formation of structure, which is uh, parallel to what we say at the basic presence or structure in architecture, a kind of structure of formatic decoration as a structure expression would be. We consider this visual design as a very important approach for understanding of the relationship of abstract force and the real form. Why from the fourth year design class onwards, we then focus on the sense of structure, which is more of an architecture element to be included in the design process. Beyond its visual, 
beyond its visual form, we encourage students to think of structure as a part of the meaning of the space in order to impact the feeling of the feelings of architecture. Our master design studio is very close to be like a workshop, opening to the off-campus teaching resources. It will focus more on the realistic physical construction, which aims to show structure and architecture in a more pragmatic and realistic way for the students' understanding. Besides the design studios, we join the workshop beginning from the undergraduate level to allow students to be exposed to different thinking uh, methods on engineering design, owing to the cooperation with many educational and the design institutes and the construction makers, universities, both inside and outside of China. Our engineering design teaching curriculum is very vibrant. So I would like to give a simple presentation to explain more on our teaching curriculum. With the understanding of the fundamentals of structure during the first few years of undergraduate, the design studio, which integrates structure with architecture, begin in the third year as a beginner class on long span structure design. We start with the one way span structure skeleton based form which is uh, relatively easier to understand and to present. This studio is to design a sport complex, include swimming and gym for the both the, the, the students and the surrounding local people, and to be located at the street corner nearby the campus. The structure design mainly includes, uh, includes a one-way long span structure from the swimming area with other small span structure for some smaller areas. The combination is, is, is to train students to mark the relationship between basic structures with their physical presentations and integrate long span and the short span structure into architecture composition. We ask for detailed final joints, including not only the structure and the space presentation, but also the equipment and the mechanic system is uh, also should be installed in order to realize the composition of the physical materials. For another, for another three as a third year design studio, we proceed, we proceed into doing multiple way long span structure design. In this robot exhibi ex exhibition hall, students are to design exhibition space at a different long span scapes and to design the space with their program using long span structure. We emphasize the structure model as one of the most important presentation results in every engineering design studio to show the clear relationship between structure, skeleton, and the space. At the previous uh, design uh, of the swimming complex, we recommend uh, the students to the one-way long span structure, but the students always unwilling to do to do so. Instead, they prefer two or three ways span, but one way, one way span to two and three way span is a very important uh, approach to understand the, the structure. So we have a very rational way to make the students to understand the, the basic uh, force mechanic of the structure. Unlike the, unlike the previous state, stadium with one-way span structure design, students are free to experiment on two, three, and even radio structure design and the corresponding layout planning. In fact, we have considered on the multiple possibilities of structure design during the skeleton of the site. In short, the third year Archinearum Design Studio, we focus on the long span structure expressions. 
Our undergraduate fourth year design studio is a selective course that the students involved are particularly interested in archinary design. Why, fortunately, this studio, this, this studio, this studio is uh, very popular among the students. It is challenging as well to pick good candidates each year. This fourth year archinary design will focus more on the integration of uh, space structure and uh, space instead of uh, mere physical structure presentation. This design is situated across a river that the building with its layout will sit on the long span structure ac across the river uh, through the programming of the internal layouts presented a much vibrant relationship between structure and the space. Complex function with a needed long span structure to cross the existing river may be a challenge, but also will be a chance for creative relationship of structure and the architecture. Some exciting and interesting idea could be active in this kind of program, I think. It is so appreciated, I appreciate to Professor Okuyama and Professor Takeuchi who had given uh, construct, constructive commands and encouragements to our students during our final great sense for the last design stadium. Thank you very much. To offer variety to the Archimedean Design Stadium in fourth year, we also have a high rise office building design situated at the most hectic and crowded site in Nanjing city. A high rise building structure differs from a special structure. Horizontal force action has greatly affected the form of the building. So research through research and the planning on the existing ways of usage of, um, of building of office building and uh, through cons consideration on the expression of structure support we encourage innovation on building form appropriate and the practical to the local site here allow me to take my sincere thanks to the structure designer from Ikari and the Shanghai Engineering Design Office who were deeply involved in our Akinari design studio, giving great help to promote our curriculum to be achieved. Other than the formal design studio, we encourage all the students to join the workshops related to the structure innovation. For them to learn and be inspired through much flexible way of knowledge exchange. From the year 2017, undergraduate third year students had been joined the summer, summer students seminar held by AIJ, Architecture Institute of Japan in Tokyo to carry out uh, structure uh, construction activities with uh, uh, Japanese and uh, Korea students. However, this uh, seminar was temporarily suspended due to the pandemic. But we are uh, so happy to receive the news from the online that we might be able to resume from next year. I, 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 I hope so. And uh, very expecting. Simultaneously, uh, undergraduate students have joined some other uh, domestic structure construction workshop such like this uh, is the uh, timber structure, uh, timber construction uh, competition hosted by UED magazine. For the engineering design studio at the mass level, we provide more flexible in the wide range of choices. Uh, our engineering design research center has has hosted two uh, successful joint uh, design studios since uh, 2017. 
architecture students from Southeast University and uh, Tokyo Tech with the structural engineering from Ikari will meet at the Tokyo Tech to collaborate in groups to design the facility for the campus in two week to in two week period. Architecture and the structural design are considered together since the beginning of the studio. Uh, the exchange of ideas, the collaboration and the opposite of both disciplines are very much encouraged. The, exp the experience is, uh, is fruitful and we sincerely hope to meet again soon. Other than the joint design studio by our research center, we collaborate as well with domestic, domestic university for design studio to help the poor village primary school in Western China. We are currently working on the joint design studio with many overseas universities. Hopefully we will have more chance to exchange and collaborate with different parties. At the master level, we also have a serial course related to the to research on engineering design. It is in indeed a popular selective course among students. We we can talk about the history and the development of engineering design. We discussed on some influential designers. We discussed on interesting thoughts and trends of structure design. Besides, we invite ex experts and designers from, uh, from the institutes for talks and uh, discussions, allow us to see and uh, think about engineering design uh, widely and uh, deeply. Yes, we are trying to make this uh, course as an open-minded to explore the world of engineering design, it will be. Finally, I'm not sure it could be the conclusion of our teaching framework, but I would like to say design-led, professionally focused, and socially minded are what, what, are, what are proceeding in teaching engineering design. Thank you. That's all. Thank you for hearing and the patient, Professor Okuyama. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bobby, for showing us the cutting educational system of your schools, indeed. So, readers, and it's so happy for us to discuss more. Thank you. So, okay, the next next speaker is uh, Mr. Li Shingan. Uh, Introduce him to Mr. Li Shingan, Chinese reading architect, directing his own office, design office, and also work for CAG design team as chief architect. Uh, CAG is in the China Architecture Design and Research Group. He's so well known internationally as a co architect for the Beijing Olympic Stadium, so called the Bird's Nest. And more, doctoral supervisor of Tianjin Universities and actu uh, architectural design instructor of Tsinghua University and part time professor of South Southeast University and others. So, is it okay? Then we are welcome to Mr. Lee Singhans. Is that okay? Are you ready? Yes, yes. Uh, it's okay. Thank you, Professor Okuyama, for the introduction for me. Uh, and hello, uh, distinguished uh, professors, architects, and engineers. It's my, uh, my honor to, to be here to share uh, my thinking and the practice about the uh, integrated uh, uh, innovation of architecture and structure. Uh, this uh, uh, this is the topic uh, of mine uh, in in today's uh, uh, today's discussion. Um, 
uh, this is a recent uh, exhibition uh, of a design of our studio called Integrated Geometry and the Poetic Scenery, the Working Place of a Chinese Contemporary Architect. We renovated uh, part of the office space to display the project models and the daily working status of our studio. Uh, in the process of preparing uh, for the exhibition, we designed the model display shelves, the vertical bent frame uh, composed of 16 millimeters slender square uh, steel tubes forms an abstract uh, grid in the space. And the moon shaped uh, uh, steel uh, uh, sheet beams uh, tie the bent frame uh, horizontally to provide the display frame, the visual distinction and the identify, uh, identify uh, ability. The width of the moon uh, beam um, uh, can be flexibly adjusted according to the size of the physical model so that the storage board of the traditional display shelf can be canceled and the model is uh, floating uh, in the air. At the same time, a small uh, pavilion uh, was built on the roof deck outside the exhibition hall, which is also used as an awning uh, on the platform. The roof of the pavilion uh, contains uh, concealed steel ribs as structural skeleton with the upper and the lower steel plates. Uh, and the thickness of the roof uh, of pavilion is only 70 millimeters. The pavilion is attached to the steel channel of the main building facade and held by three thin columns uh, on the opposite side. However, due to the height of the span, the section of the columns has to be uh, unacceptably thicker than our as, uh, as uh, aesthetic requirement. Brainstorming for the uh, potential solution, one of our team members suggested, why not use the same principle of the moon beam? Then the problem was immediately solved by transforming the moon-shaped beam of the exhibition rack into a moon-shaped column. The The pavilion uh, is like a horizontally placed display rack from the artificial uh, uh, mountain cliff, uh, uh, from the artificial mountain cliff uh, on the east facade of the building extending to the city uh, skyline. It is like a light kite held by three moon shaped columns, so we call it Moon Wild Pavilion. As the night falls, the architects sit under the pavilion to take a rest after a day's busy work. Busy work. The panoramic uh, view of Beijing, which uh, embraced the uh, weakest uh, tools of a thousand years of history and the development, is exactly an urban poetic scenery outlined by the Moon Wild Pavilion. So. Um, as this point uh, caused by the original mechanical structural calculation, the architectural form, space, title, and the poetic atmosphere are perfectly integrated. Uh, it is not only uh, the load bearing or the force of the structure itself anymore, but also shaping and achieving the form and the spatial uh, characteristics of the building, uh, which is uh, a, a, a consumer made in a, a pleasing design product. I call, I call it structural field. Uh, the structure here is, is both a non-structure 
and uh, uh, gerund uh, constructing, uh, which is to uh, reshape the uh, terrain with architectural structure or structural settlement to establish order to construct the field, to lead the narrative, to strengthen people's spatial experience and the poetic uh, perception, and to create the unique uh, uh, temper, uh, temperament, <clears throat> spirit, and the touching spatial atmosphere of architecture. Structural uh, field uh, is one of the five main principles in the design concept of architecture interacting with nature, integrated geometry, and the poetic scenery in my study. Uh, uh, specifically, uh, the structural field includes the following uh, three aspects. The first, the interaction, evolution, and uh, a matching uh, between the structure and the architectural space form and the construction process of the building. This is based on a geometric logic and the physical state of the person to uh, endow the building with a uh, concise order and a specific uh, contrast to uh, accommodate ways, uh, bo uh, borrow from and even create nature so that the people can get the experience of poetic scenery. Uh, secondly, the horizontal, uh, horizontal or vertical decomposition and the combination of a structural uh, spatial, uh, spatial units and their consideration, creation, and the presentation of architectural and spatial ideas. The basic building blocks of architectures uh, or settlements are both structural and spatial. Uh, they are uh, matched with people's physical conditions to form a, a guiding or framed uh, spatial uh, interface for scenery and strengthen people's spatial experience and the poetic perception. Thirdly, um, the participation of people as the main character uh, uh, from the uh, both body and the mind aspects in the series of scale management and the scale construction of the vision scene to create a new uh, modular system. This series of scale management is closely related to the experiencer's physical perception and the mental imagination. Such a modular system should also be highly integrative and uh, 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 penetrate uh, uh, the various relationships with the building site, space, structure, form, and even construction process. This can also naturally adapt to the contemporary uh, industrialized uh, prefabricated construction system, which has a special value for design, construction, use, and the maintenance. Uh, here are uh, a few examples to illustrate the specific operation of the design principle of structural field in architectural practice. Uh, the Yuhuan Museum and the Library uh, is a complex that includes a library, uh, a museum, and the public space in between the two uh, buildings. It is located on reclaimed uh, land and built in the new development zone of Yuhuan, an island country, a uh, county, uh, an island county in Taizhou City, Zhejiang Province. The area of Kanmen uh, in the old city of Yuhuan is unique, uh, characterized, uh, characterized by local fishing port. In the design of the two halls in the new area with a nearly barren City Park, the special form of the Kanmen fishing port is adopted to the space. Meanwhile, the two sides of buildings are integrated with the plaza and the waterscape design in between to form a landscape of mountain and, wind and water, which not only form the independent circulation of the two 
function, uh, functional buildings, but also create a, a holistic environment with distinctive spatial layers. Both the, both the museum and the library uh, were uh, mod uh, modeled as modern fishing village settlements with horizontal and vertical combination by curved roof building units. Both groups of buildings sit on large stone foundations uh, access, uh, accessible, uh, accessible by long ramps and uh, stairs. From the rear uh, via a tunnel, uh, visitors can enter the halls through the main entrance. Uh, alternatively, uh, enter the uh, atrium at the back. These routes take visitors through mountains as they enter the port. The units of the uh, building are interlocked and connected in linearly, uh, linearly uh, or uh, stacked um, uh, vertically. The inner courtyards of the two buildings are relatively far away and in opposite directions uh, connected by horizontal lawn of water together with landscaping uh, such as the fish, uh, fishing pavilion, wolf, uh, deck, uh, steps, and the trees, they form an image of fishing port in the new developing area of Yuhuan County. In this project, we studied the possibility of building basic units and their combinations to uh, generate buildings and the group spaces. The museum and the library were built uh, using a concrete cable suspension method to create a, a, a concave a surface. And a similar large span fish belly beam structure were also used. The modular structures uh, and uh, um, uh, units are repeated, uh, combined, varied, connected, and enclosed in horizontal and vertical directions to form unique indoor uh, column-free spaces and outdoor public spaces, corresponding to the needs of function, behavior of people, terrain, observation, and the situation. Through uh, forming unique in interior column-free spaces and the exterior spatial clusters, a completely featureless uh, reclaimed area is renovated into a paradise-like artificial landscape with the interaction between architecture and the waterscape and also among the buildings themselves uh, uh, boring uh, browing uh, the distant mountains and the water they are integrated to form a poetic scenery Ryue Bridge uh, located on the edge of the new uh, developing uh, area called Lingang of Shanghai city, which is an uh, ecological area with an emerging atmosphere in the park uh, near the lake. And it is in the, it is park. Sorry, I, I need to plug the port. Yes, sorry. It is uh, in the park uh, near the lake and uh, completely open to the public. The bridge uh, is composed um, uh, of two connected bridges. Um, the main bridge is circular in plain arc. The bridge length is uh, 120 meters. Uh, uh, the bridge width is 60, uh, six meters. Uh, one side of the bridge is supported by a number of uh, inclined columns. The auxiliary uh, bridge is an arch uh, bridge has a, a height of 6.3 meters, a span of 61 meters, and a bridge width of 3 meters. The main bridge functions for uh, connectively and the secondary bridge a more for view and landscaping uh, experience where the two uh, 
uh, are uh, interconnected at the top. Thanks to the arc on plan uh, loop uh, cable of the main bridge and the self width of the uh, struts and the bridge, the mechanical balance of the uh, unilateral uh, uh, oblique uh, column, uh, columns support is skillful, skillfully formed and the uh, aux uh, auxiliary bridge uh, supports the oblique columns to form a column-free span between the river channel. The project uh, plays a um, uh, role as a multiple infrastructure for serving public by a modest and light attitude, trying to uh, uh, minimize impact on the environment organically uh, embedding in site entire ecological area and even uh, uh, sociolo uh, sociological community, community. The gymnasium of the new campus of Tianjin University is located at the north end of the new campus of Tianjin University at the Haihe Education Park uh, in the um, in the uh, uh, middle uh, uh, stretch of the Hai, uh, of the Haihe River, Tianjin City, because the surrounding uh, 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 surrounding uh, area is a new uh, city site that was built quickly from scratch for those who come here to live, study, and work. It is full of uh, uh, fractures, uh, barrenness, and the blankness, and the lacking a sense of belonging and the spatial context. The comprehensive gymnasium in the new campus is a sports complex integrating indoor and outdoor ground and the roof, uh, serving the daily sport education activities for teachers and the students. Uh, from the multiples to a single Enter, uh, entirety. A linear uh, a public space was designed to connect uh, different uh, sports uh, venues in accordance with each activity's rules regarding uh, court size, spatial uh, boundaries, and the equipment. A series of structural units, including uh, cili uh, uh, cylindrical uh, arches, ruled surfaces, and the corned uh, concrete arches were integrated uh, in to support the ceiling and the, um, and the surf as the building's exterior walls. Using the combination of shapes and the forms, um, we were uh, able to create a vast indoor space for athletic activities, provide um, uh, an oppressive uh, lighting from above and the, uh, regulate uh, ventilation using the heat price method. The result is a perfectly um, unified structure of space and the function. The building uh, looks like a dense uh, settlement composed of multiple sports spaces. Uh, this is uh, uh, this uh, logical and the geometric application and the expression of architectural structure uh, establishes a sense of place for the building that generates a dialogue with uh, its, its uh, disjointed and uh, indistinguishable natural surroundings caused by the rapid uh, construction. At the same time, uh, the different uh, scales and the uh, shapes of the structure uh, in the space uh, reflect the various human body movement uh, interacting uh, with the, this special human natural uh, landscape full of uh, vital, uh, vitality. Uh, along with its relationship to its environment, the different scales and the shapes of structure uh, echo the extension and the movement of the human body uh, immersing in their activity. Uh, 
people can not only realize the uh, ex uh, existence of covering artificial structures in space, but also strongly feel the surrounding natural environment, thus forming a strong space field and evoke a potential, uh, a poetic situation in which people are immersed. The quiet building exterior of appearance and the strong atmosphere of the interior space are two sides of a coin. The structure uh, becomes a, a mediator between architectural creation and the existing uh, elements uh, of environment, function, space, form, construction, people, and the scenery. Like the uh, medium in physics, the shape, texture, and the state of the structure uh, de de determine uh, uh, the uh, direction and the intensity of the transmission of various other energy in the architecture. Establishing uh, the initial order from structure, reshaping the terrain with structural form, creating uh, associations with structural groups, uh, constructing the field with structural co uh, coordination, and the leading of uh, diaconic uh, narrative with structure uh, 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 materialization. This is my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ri, uh, showing us so many uh, beautiful and an exciting and a different type of project and architectures. So uh, we can uh, realize it so deeply uh, you designs uh, from the small scale, handy scale project to then the full scale, heavy project in the same attitude. Thank you very much. So, thank you. Um, next, our next speaker uh, is Mr. Jun Yanagisawa. Uh, I introduce him. Uh, Mr. Jun Yanagisawa, he's a Japanese leading architect and establishing and directing his own design office called Contemporaries. At the same time, he teaches as full time associate professor of College of Architecture and Environmental Design at Kanto Gakuin University in Yokohama City. So, is it okay, the, uh, Mr. Yanagisawa? Are you ready? We are uh, welcome to you. Uh, thank you for Okema Sensei. And then I'm very proud of being here and then to be invited to this very interesting symposium. Mr. John, uh, the, the, could you turn the slideshow? Okay. Uh, can we share the... It's okay, thank you. Okay. So, uh, it's been a long time since I've given the English lecture like this, so I'm a little bit nervous, so... Please forgive my poor English and then please be patient for a while. So my title is a relationship between structure and the regional characteristics. So as an introduction, I try to uh, just uh, wrote down like here. So I just graduated from that uh, Tokyo Institute of Technology like uh, Mr. Okuyama sensei then in 1992 with a master's degree in Kazunari Sakamoto, which is very popular uh, architects research and worked as a staff member at the studio called Toyo Ito Associates. It's just atria like uh, until 2000. So when I think about the architecture, I not only did sci-fi <coughs> disappear the program, but I also start by visiting the place and feeling the atmosphere with climate and so on. Then I imagine the structure needed for that place. This is my approach to architecture. Therefore, for me, the structure and the characteristic of the land, the soil, the climate, and the region are inextricably linked. So today, I would like to share with you some of the things that I have thought about and practiced over the last 10 years in Japan. 
As you know, there was a great East Japan earthquake in 2011 and the Kumamoto major earthquake in 2016. My project, Minamisomo Children's Playground and Takano Hospital, have a lot to do with those two earthquakes. Again, this led me to think deeply about the relationship between earthquake and structures like regions. Today, I would like to introduce that uh, as well. So let's start. So from the beginning, I'd like to introduce my uh, one of the, my biggest project. It's kind of public building. What we call M Park is a Shiojiri City Community Center. It's a complex building, like library and a community center. In 2010, so building program is like this: public library and shop, and a community space, an office, and so on. So it's really complicated. So. First of all, I like to show this the section of diagram. Uh, it's uh, in the basement for it's a kind of isolation uh, because of for the earthquake, and then from the above, in the third levels, I just put it flat slab floor around these levels. Uh, it's the structure is the steel uh, concrete structure. And then above this front floor, I just selected the uh, light steel structures. So this is the station of the Shiojiri city. It's very small city, 66,000 population in Nagano prefecture. So Shiojiri is here. And then Suwa Lake is very popular. They have uh, one of the interesting festival, which is held in Suwa Taisha Shrine. So very close to Suwa Taisha Shrine. So in Suwa Taisha, they have a very interesting and strange festival since 800, Onbashira Festival, what we call. The Onbashira festival is a series of Shinto ritual to rebuild the hall of treasure. So they <clears throat> always just bring that only 16 large by trees, pear trees, each over 150 years old and over 70 meters long, are selected to become the Onbashira in the year of the tiger and the, the year of the goddess of mercy. Every seven years, so in that sense, they are, how to say, relatively accustomed to the Sinto in this area. So this is the site situation. And the M Park is the building of complex site design is here. So it's surrounded in the uh, central station and then city hall and this. Japanese people like to make this kind of triangle because triangle makes a kind of area. So dots, connected dots makes a line and then three points makes the area. This is the way of really Japanese people like that. And this is the situation of the bird's point of view. So the, this complex building is connecting to that in front of the shopping malls to cultivate each other tree. So this figure is the kind of picture which I just proposed in the competition 2006. So this is the image of the my structure of these buildings. So what I just wanted to propose is just the kind of figure of this structural situation. And then this is the real, I mean, uh, in the site. The first precasted concrete wall was setting up. The supervisor just watching from outside. So this is the, just a week ago of the first uh, wall was set up. 
So can you see that uh, on the on the slabs that there's the several anchors to insert these uh, precasted hybrid walls? Then finally, that uh, 97 hybrid walls were setting. And then I just uh, asked the constructor to keep the open situation without enclosure for public because this building should be the core facility for the city. That's why the citizens and the people who just uh, live around here could see that uh, this situation outside. So this is the final situation. And then six millimeters of thickness steel plate with stat for the brachiostate concrete was like this. It's uh, the length has the 11.4 meters. So it's a kind of papers. And then this is the diagram what I also propose in the competition phase. And then to me that, uh, I just proposed six diagrams for that uh, competition time. Then particularly for me that uh, what is important is that the final in the light down diagrams, what I call new landscape by walls. So this is also the pictures when I just proposed in the competition time in the paper, which is my image is just uh, uh, almost hundreds walls just standing in the in the side. So this is the image of a numerous number of wall makes another landscape. So the walls set on the side very randomly. And then the, the relation in between the randomness of the walls makes the kind of expanding for the, the large territories. This is my just images. And then this is the image of the uh, structural engineer just made it. So first of all, that the, how to say, very, uh, independent uh, concrete walls standing up. Uh, I mean, concrete walls just standing up that very independently. And then beams and the slabs just inside in between the walls. So this is the final situation of the very structural engineer diagrams. And then finally, the pre-casted hybrid concrete walls becomes that at 200 millimeters, which I meant to uh, squeeze more these concrete walls around 150 millimeters at the competition time, but uh, it becomes more. And then could you see this figure on the uh, this is the planning of the real buildings. So most of all in the first floor planning was surrounded by that uh, library. And library originally is the very open space. So that's why I could choose this structure system, very randomness. And then people could see and then people could walk around and in the in the these walls. This is second floor planning. So I just chose that this void system as much as possible in the second floors. So it means the floors is a kind of has a floating in the, on the on the first floor levels. So in the second floor, I was composite of library and the community center. So this is the figure. So in the skylight, the natural light comes into that on the first level as well. 
And then third level, uh, almost this level has the open space and then composition of the total floor, 58.3% is consist of open space. Like this. So I just prepared the 300 cheers for the citizens because they they really have say chose that the place where they won't be in this 300 cheers for every day. And then sometimes they use that this walls for the exhibition. So the 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 Shioji city rented these walls. So this is the figure of the top of the roof. Just the office, mostly that the office uh, built on that, this uh, flat slabs. So this is the figure of the first date of the opening day of this building. It's like how to say uh, the opening of the open market or opening of the department stores, the beginning like that. And then uh, years later, these walls can be used for the pictures. And then now, the, uh, this building is very popular for the costume prayers. Many costume prayers comes around in Empire to make a pictures. Please check out the, the, the homepage of Empire. And then just uh, this is the final picture of Emperor that which I really and uh, my favorite pictures because people just uh, sitting and then looking around the different ways and different directions in the in the courtyard in the center. So this is a night view the buildings. And second project, what I introduce uh, for everybody is this indoor park in Minami Soma. Uh, this is design joint venture with Toyo Ito Associates, 2016. The total floor area is 153 very small uh, buildings. So Minami Soma is the, the is the town which is damaged by that uh, uh, east. Uh, great earthquake in Japanese Japan in 2011. So this is text for Minami Soma, a little bit longer, so I translated very shortly that uh, this unprecedented experience, I'm just sorry. Uh, A turning point in own town thinking about architecture. Contemporary is my office participated in the number of proposals in the Tohoku region to realize housing complex and small scale public facilities in the city, while at the same time somehow playing a role in the reconstruction of the region. I apply for the design proposal for various programs such as housing complex, a theater school, but uh, I made it to the final presentation, but I wasn't selected in the end. So I just uh, wrote about uh, some, some kind of a context. Uh, uh, until I just, just started to design this uh, prayer buildings. So in the finally, I said that the playground for everyone realized here is small. I still think that the role played by the architecture is very significant. I could honestly feel that this is the kind of architecture I would like to pursue. So this building is, how to say, supported by the, the private company. And then now the city government lands this building. So it means that uh, <clears throat> the private company dominated to the, 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 uh, the fees, I mean, the monies for the buildings. And then the city government took over 
the learning uh, to run the distribution now. So, so this area was really damaged by tsunami. And then everything was wrapped. Everything was brought by the, the waters. So uh, we have Home for All. It's a kind of uh, the association for, I'd say, building some uh, small facilities for the people who just uh, lives there, which is damaged by tsunami and earthquake. And this is the site situation. So everything was really, I have to say, uh, roughed by tsunami. And then people who just uh, has to live in temporary housing like this, and there was elementary school which was uh, made of concrete, so they could uh, be alive after the tsunami. And then now, this is the station of 2012. So some of housing uh, built after that. So this is just a sketch of the my first. Uh, sketches and in the site. Oh, sorry. So this is the planning. Uh, the two of small proportion of the circle is just a connecting that. Then center of that, they have a kind of playground of the sun. This is the section. So this is a uh, wooden structure. And then I'll just, uh, so uh, this is a structure diagram, which is just uh, written by the Akira Suzuki, who is that the very popular Japanese structure engineer. So it is a symbolic wooden structure with two circular planes. And the one large and the one small with climbing beams and low crumbs made of a small piece of lumber stuck in the catenary shape. That so this kind of structure system is of course that collaborate with me I and mean, then architects and a structural engineer always just talk about this kind of system. But uh, I didn't just propose this figure. And then Suzuki-san is a structural engineer, also didn't just propose quickly because we always just, uh, uh, how to say, give our images of each other. So I also sometimes give the image from my side. And then sometimes Suzuki-san also gave me a kind of structural image that this is kind of how to say catch balls in between two of us that. And then in this time, what I just proposed is that I didn't want to just make a kind of just a, how to say very uh, series of beams, I mean, climbing beams. Now, these buildings are composite of uh, climbing beams, which is a kind of has a stacking piece of wood. So this is the things what I would like to do this, like this. So this uh, structure system is really how to say annoys the builders, I mean carpenters. So very skillful, I mean craftsman really could realize this uh, structure like this. And then uh, as uh, form for all principles that uh, uh, we participate, we have to invite the, I mean, people who lives there or so who people <coughs> who just, uh, how to say, look around there, participate in this building to real, realize this. So this is kids who just help for the painting for the walls. 
this is the, the first date of the opening. Because many children couldn't touch the sand because of the effect of the radiation. So that's why one of the girls and boys just said that, that they couldn't be they couldn't touch the uh, this sand for three years, something like that. So um, if you have a time that please see and check that this home for all just a web page that we are still thinking and then we are still striking and then trying to how to connect in the region which damaged by the earthquake and even in the Sendai and the Kumamoto as well. And then with Toyoito and then Sejima Kazuyo. And then this is the final project of what I introduced this time, the Corruptology Center, Takan Hospital in 2017. Uh, total floor area is 18,000 square meters. It's a really huge building, Kumamoto. So as you know that Kumamoto was uh, relatively really big in, uh, big becoming the biggest city, uh, 788,000 population. But uh, the site station is like this. So the Kumamoto is just the west side of Aso Mountains. And then 2016, the Kumamoto has damaged by the really biggest earthquake, which they never expected and they never really had predicted. So my project, Takano Hospital, is huge, located just the east side of the Kumamoto Castle, like this. And for Kumamoto people and the Kumamoto uh, here, the castle and the Aso, Aso is that very important for their mind. So that's why the concept is the kind of that uh, how to open to the nature, I mean, naturalness that, and how to combine the regional place and the regional people in this hospital. So as you see here that uh, this site is just surrounded by the many public building and the public park. So that's why in this building, I also try to realize that uh, this is a kind of series of uh, surroundings and environment so that's why I propose that, that this is a hospital as a park and a, as a part of park. And this is the planning of the upper floor, the fourth and the fifth floor for patient room that. So every patient room is, how to say, opening towards that uh, surroundings. So people could see that the outside in each bed like this. So this is the part of clusters. So usually the, the bedroom has four beds. And then the general uh, hospital consists of the four bedrooms as an ISO. And then just the four bedroom is lining towards that outside. And then two beds just towards the other side and then two beds towards the outside. So in this hospital, four beds totally uh, force to the different direction, so like this. So what we call that the full personal space in the adaptable in four bedroom. That's why this building has like these shapes. And then every patient rooms, from every, every patient room, patient could see that outside, people could feel that the uh, Aso and also Kumamoto uh, castles. So in the, the basement and then the second, until second floors, it's a very open system. And the upper floors, it's a very, how to say, tight economical uh, span. 
So uh, the final project I would like to show that just uh, a little bit in the uh, underway studios in Yokohama. Yokohama has that uh, uh, three million seven thousand people. So that site station for construction like concrete landscape. What I just thought that this is beautiful landscape here. But the surroundings was really shabby and a horrible place that at that time. So then police and the regional people tried to, how to say, shift and change uh, like a slum clearance and then to push the people out. So this is just a faster, uh, situation in 2011, like this. And then my proposal is just uh, how to say, uh, make the architecture like a series of the surroundings, so which has that the many type of the roofs, uh, like environments, which is a memory of the buildings. So fifths of architects just participate on this building, uh, this projects. So this is the totally different project of fifths architects, which participate on that project. Then programs also different. And then, as a structure system, what I just try to do is just a very subtle structure. I mean, like this, which is uh, capable of bringing by hand. Because this under uh, laid away is hard to construct. So that's why I try to make the, this building as a how to say, light as possible and as a, how to say, uh, subtle uh, construction system. Like this. So thank you very much for be patient for my English and uh, thank you for participating. Thank you very much, Mr. Jun Yanagisawa. So, uh, uh, showing us a uh, zebra uh, in raking a public building project. Thank you very much. So, then there are, through your presentation, that we can learn your design intentions. Uh, you want, in order to make a uh, local communities, you mixed uh, a regional context and the structure and the con construction system. Yeah. The kind of way is so useful for us to think about and the architectural image to the future, I think. Thank you very much. So uh, next and the final speaker in this session is Mr. Enik Masip Bosch. Yeah, uh, I, I introduce him. Uh, Mr. Enik Masip Bosch, he's a well-known architect of Barcelona in Spain and established and uh, directing his own design office called EMB Architect. EMB means an uh, Enric Massive Bosch, his name, yeah. At the same time, full-time associate professor of UPC Barcelona Tech. UPC means a uh, Universitat Politecnica Politecnica de Catalonia. So, uh, it's okay, the, are you ready? Mr. Enric, the, we uh, welcome to you. Mr. Enric, is it okay? Are you ready? Can you hear me? Oh. Enric, Mr. Enric, let's go ahead to start. Yes, yeah, sorry, Okoyama-san. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It's on the screen. I was uh, somehow stuck, okay. 
can you see the screen? Hey, we can see. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much for your invitation to this symposium. Uh, beyond having my office and being a um, professor at Barcelona Tech, I also would like to say that I feel Toko Dai also my alma mater because I spent two years in Japan working with Shinohara Sensei and uh, being assigned at uh, Sakamoto Lab. Uh, and I, I am very glad to meet again many friends uh, uh, here in this symposium. There have been many interesting insights about the relationship between architecture and engineering so far. Um, let me say that I'm enjoying this symposium very much. And I hope that you are not too tired after so many hours and that my contribution will open up yet a new perspective in this subject. Um, maybe I have to start explaining that the education and the professional responsibility of architects in Spain include both structural design and MEP design. This is a unique situation also in the European context. Maybe we could say that in Spain, we can call archineering just architecture. Uh, a good example is Gaudí, for instance, but uh, this is a very general situation of architects in, in Spain. Uh, I can design my own structures. I can even calculate my own structures or MEP. But of course, in professional reality, you need to optimize uh, your time. You're not, you need to optimize your knowledge. And uh, we use in my studio, and like in many studios, architecture studios here in Catalonia, we use specialists for structure and for MEP. But usually these specialists are architects. So let's say that when we talk about structural engineer in Spain, very often is an architect, as, uh, as an, uh, has the education of an architect. Um, today, I would like to, uh, to explain my experience with this interaction between uh, different disciplines, focusing on one issue that also interests me, that is the relationship between form and technique. Uh, first, I have to point out that I understand technique in its philosophical dimension. Let's say that technique in this sense is a general attitude of human beings to make the world inhabitable. We are born into a world and we need something, we need some mediation to make this world inhabitable. This is a technical approach to our surviving, to our survival. And this is what I believe is the, technic, uh, the technique that I am interested in, which is different from the word technology. Technology is a mere uh, application of this thought, of this understanding of reality. Um, in this sense, I would like to introduce a book published over 100 years ago by Jeffrey Scott, an English architecture critic which tries to understand architecture in its own terms, um, let's say in its autonomy, and tries to free architectural discourse from crutches, let's see, from what he calls fallacies. That is, explanations of architecture from, other, uh, from a single viewpoint, to justi a justification of architecture from a single viewpoint. Technique has been used as an alibi to justify architectural choices. 
we see nowadays, for instance, how sustainability is used very often to greenwash architectural choices that are essentially non-sustainable. This Scott calls 100 years ago, the biological fallacy. And the same for, for structure. As many lecturers today have pointed out so far, this Scott calls the mechanical fallacy. That is using a supposed inevitability of a structural choices to justify an, archi an arch architectural result. This is a sort of paradox, I would say, in which architecture is subjugated to other disciplines while claiming at the same time uh, being independent, which is not the case. I think the, um, the true meaning of this uh, action that any architecture involves is this integration of different uh, approaches to generate a, re a response to our inhabiting the world. In my practice, we are very interested in what we call immediacy. That is trying to integrate in a radical way, form and technique and solve this way, what I would call the Scott paradox. In this approach, structure, is architecture, like the Parthenon in Athens or like Santa Maria del Mar in Barcelona, which I usually say it's the best building that human being has ever built. This, of course, it's an exaggeration. Uh, this is what I like to call what you see is what you get, getting this concept from the computer scientists. The rest of decisions having to do with this architect, a structure is architecture, are aligned with this. So, with this primary starting point, this this uh, approach has many advantages. Of course, to start with, it allows for a very flexible and adaptive uh, management of budget because it is a non-frill approach. And consequently, it is an approach aligned with contemporary issues like reducing carbon footprint or using as little materials as possible. We have seen today several examples and I would like to open up a discussion afterwards in which this idea of reducing materials as much as possible is not uh, taken to the limit. And I believe that if we are really committed to a sustainable approach, this is where we have to start with. Let's say the first step is not to build at all. Not to build is the most sustainable approach. In some cases, this is possible. In some other cases, we need to build. So in these other cases, maybe we need to reuse and reusing, we have seen some examples today, means uh, taking advantage of what is already there. And maybe the third step is building a new, but then in this context, we need to build using as little material as possible. This is what I believe. I'd like to present three projects by my office to illustrate this approach at three different scales. The first one is Diagonal Zero Zero Tower, a 110 meter high rise at the origin of Diagonal Avenue in Barcelona, which is the main thoroughfare in the city. This very special position was uh, one very important factor in the design and we wanted to have a very direct relationship with the city at a large scale but also at a closed scale. And the tower connects with its complicated topography around it directly. So opening the interior to the exterior 
uh, or vice versa. And that was the first condition in which we wanted to work, to do a, a building that has a direct relationship with the city around. In fact, we even eliminated the limits of the site and we incorporated the non-built area to the public spaces around. The second condition was to have a varied interior with several voids at different levels of the building to accommodate a diverse program and to generate diverse spatial experiences. Of course, this allows also for a, um, a resiliency of the building as changes occur in these office buildings very often over, over the years. Anyway, these voids had to be used in many different ways. They generated different possibilities of occupancy and they had the power to generate uh, also an architectural experience that was diverse within the main volume. And the third condition was to have a free and versatile space so that offices could be arranged on different ways. This led to the adoption of a modified tube in tube scheme. The interior core is a concrete prism that uh, holds basically that receives uh, most of the horizontal uh, stresses of the building and the out outside ring is a combination as you will see later of vertical pillars very slender 16 by 16 centimeters only steel pillars and an exterior uh, bracing that uh, supports the horizontal and torsion forces. Of course, this possibility leads to a complete uh, free column uh, interior space, which allows for many different configurations uh, of the layout of the building. In order to minimize sections, we used an exterior ring of very slender pillars, as I said, and in what I call a diffuse structure. This is an idea that we will see later in the other two projects that I will show. And, but of course, these very slender pillars can only hold vertical stresses. So they were designed to hold only vertical stresses while horizontal uh, stresses and rotation stresses need some sort of bracing. So we introduced a resistant plane made of an irregular bracing that uh, follows the different conditions of the interior uh, volume. This model we did at EMBA before we committed uh, an structural engineer. We had the structural concept very clear from the start, but still we needed a dialogue. And, and this is a very important word, I think, in this symposium, the word dialogue, to fine tune the concept and especially to make it easy to build. So the final form, we can say, is a refinement of our concept. And one of the most important contributions of our structural engineer was to define the construction process. These are some uh, diagrams that we interchange between the structural engineers and our office in order to fine tune this exterior plane that supports the horizontal stresses. But this is the construction process that was uh, designed uh, in collaboration with our engineer and was what was finally the taken the, 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 the process that we used for building, uh, for constructing the building. First, we built, of course, the central core in a very complicated fashion, as I will uh, tell you later, because in this, what you see is what you get approach. We 
didn't cover concrete with any other finish. So any material used in the building was left as it was in the construction process. So we started, uh, we had one team of workers building up the concrete core, while at the same time we were uh, uh, building uh, with another team of workers these prefabricated uh, panels of very slender uh, pillars uh, of the exterior ring. Then at a certain uh, moment, uh, we started putting on the uh, curtain wall, the glass covering the building. But be because of this glass uh, closed the facades, the wind loads were already uh, significant at this point, so we needed in the same at the same time at a certain uh, time of this uh, building up the uh, curtain wall, we needed to place the bracing outside. So it was a very complex process in a way, but that was built in in eight months. We finished the total uh, building. And we built one floor per week, and it was really a success. No accidents, uh, and everything was smooth as planned. It was complex, but well planned, so we could achieve the goal of building the whole structure in eight months. This is the interior, uh, and this is as, as it was during the construction time, and this is the interior as it is now. The concrete is left as it is. The pillars have this uh, fire protection placed uh, afterwards. This is the complicated um, core form. It was complicated because we wanted it to be uh, stone-like in appearance. So we didn't want to use the standard um, I don't know how you call them in English, you know, these typical uh, uh, connectors between two forms that generate these holes and then you have to fill in and so on. We wanted to have a complete uh, solid appearance, no holes at all. And it meant, and also we wanted to have a very smooth surface. It meant the form had to be open elevated, close again, refill one floor, stand for a couple of days, reopen, and so on. So it was a complex form, but that gave an excellent result. And as for the pillars here, you can see the dimension, um, they were placed, they were prefabricated in two floors, most of the, uh, most of the height of the building. So we could place the slabs the horizontal slabs, which are also made of concrete afterwards uh, between the central core and the outer ring of a structure. This was part of the process of construction, which is a, it's a, it's a very uh, moving moment uh, in, the, in the process of the building. And this is all the elements that we made the building with. This is what I call this, what you see is what you get. Uh, there is nothing else than what you build and what you build is left there as the final architecture. Of course, this, uh, there is one more layer of willingness, of architectural willingness, so to speak, which is um, we wanted the building to be moving. For me, that was very important. The location at the origin of Diagonal Avenue made it, it, did, it shouldn't be just a building. It shouldn't be actually a building. It should be more a presence, something that also change uh, with time, change in different moments of the day. It changed with different climatic conditions, that it had a life of its own. And this, we achieved by using a very uh, special uh, curtain wall with serigraphy and different uh, layers of um, uh, magnetronic uh, appliances in the, in the glass. 
This experience at Diagonal Zero Zero, we, uh, I wanted to use in another project, but this time this project is a horizontal uh, skyscraper. Let's say it's a ground scraper. Uh, it's the new library in Barcelona, which is uh, the new um, province library in Barcelona, which is annexed to an old uh, train station that is only partially used nowadays. The site has this very strange shape. And we wanted to use the site as the final form of the building. As for the uh, main uh, decisions in the project, you see the shape of the, of the site is the shape of the building. And the main decisions of the project was to use the same diffuse structure concept that we use at Diagonal 00, uh, having a central core and this uh, very uh, regular uh, structure in the perimeter and no pillars at all in the center. The central core in this case was divided in different cores because the building is so long. And all these cores enclose different programs. Some are staircases, uh, elevators, toilets, but also we have the big uh, lecture hall that was meant to be uh, interior. And for us, this is an evolution of the system that I explained before. Actually, here we also reused some of the ideas that we uh, had in uh, Diagonal 00, zero, and we open up these different voids at different places. So we had always these double areas, double height areas in the perimeter, while in the core we had a single floor areas. That, that was very much adapted to the program that was given us for the library. It is a building that is yet uh, to be built, it has no calendar so far, uh, but it's something that we believe uh, will be a very um, moving space as well. Having this direct relationship with the city, having this um, interior flexibility, for me, these are very important concepts uh, to keep. And the final project I will show today is still a smaller scale. And it is a school that we finished a couple of years ago, uh, uh, some 100 kilometers north of Barcelona in a countryside area. It's the last building of the, of the small village where it is placed. Now we have built the first phase of this building, which is only this L. You can see the mouse pointer, right? And the second phase is still waiting for a calendar. This is the model uh, with which we won the competition. This is the location of the school at the end of the village and opening up to the continuation of this agriculture land on, on beyond. Now we have built the red part, the first phase, and the second phase uh, is still uh, to be built. Anyway, here, um, which is just a single floor building, we wanted to reuse this idea of immediacy, of what you see is what you get. Um, in a way that we even went one step further, I understand, uh, in the way that we used materials. For, for one, um, we started again with a diffuse structure. This is an idea that I find, uh, in this case, very important. In the case of Diagonal 00, zero for instance, the, the pillars in the facade, which are separated 135 centimeters. They are half the module of a single office. 270 is a very standard office. So the pillars give you the, um, 
the directions on how to subdivide the space if you want to subdivide it. But at the same time, this allows for very small curtain wall um, structure. So we saved on curtain wall structure, and we saved quite a lot of money, and we could use that money to get a much better glass. At the time, it was the most expensive glass you could buy in Europe uh, for the tower. Because glass in a curtain wall has so many, um, has to have so many functions that it, it needs to be really good. Otherwise, it is a disaster in terms of sustainability and so on. Anyway, in this case, the idea was to use the structure again, not only to support uh, something that then needs a secondary support, but to use it as a single structure. This is only the only structure that exists in the building is the structure that uh, holds the roof. And as you will see later, it holds everything. We had, this is another school that we did some years ago. We had another experience with this no frill approach uh, using prefabricated, very heavy prefabricated concrete elements everything from the foundations to the pillars to the walls and everything was prefabricated and even though the system is very different um, the idea is the same to use as few elements as possible to be used in as many ways as possible so this is the structure for the ia school and this structure, which is very regular, etc., it has these exceptions with these skylights that also serve as thermal devices to improve the sustainability performance of the building because they face sound. Um, this is uh, this uh, system uh, was discussed uh, with our structural engineer, which decided the 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 dimension of the pillars, which finally went 80 by 80, very slender pillars. The beams are slightly larger, 10 by 80. And this is a, a project, although we developed this in BIM uh, with Revit program, actually I drew it myself by hand, almost all the details. And I think this, we have found out that this combination of high tech, uh, drawing programs and hand-drawn uh, details is very, very helpful. And we can communicate, some of the other panelists talked about the necessity of communication. I think it was uh, one sound and the necessity of communicating uh, our choices to a wider, uh, to all the agents of a project, which are many. And I think in this way, this was a very uh, uh, fruitful experience. This is the rabbit drawing, which are usually very terrible in terms of beauty, uh, but they are of course useful in many other, in many other aspects. And, and this is the final concept of this building. What we could say a three layer concept. We have the bones, which are covered with a warm coat to make the interior inhabitable. And this warm coat is covered with a raincoat, uh, which is a very thin layer of uh, zinc. And everything here, you, there is no foundation. The whole, the floor is the foundation itself. So every element of this project we wanted it to use at least for two functions. This is the this is the floor, the final floor as it will be. This is the standing of the small structure, which is directly um, fixed on the on the floor. Uh, this is the placing of the insulation of the bottom part. These are, we use these very slim uh, elements and 
in the library, which is at the corner of the plan. And of course, the length of the beam was longer. We added some extra support, but that was all the thing we needed to add to the original system. And over this bone, this skeleton, we use a single element, just one element that were, serves for everything. This element, I will show you here, is made with an exterior um, layer of, um, of uh, mashed wood, uh, which is uh, waterproof. We have a layer uh, of, in the walls of 12 centimeter insulation. In the roof, we have a layer of 20 centimeter insulation. And we have an interior layer which is made of different finishes. So it can be used as acoustic uh, element or it can be used as a strong, hard element, etc. And these panels, they are fixed directly to the bones, both in the uh, facades and on the roof, as you can see here. Over that, there is the different layers that are here you can see the different qualities that you can find in this system different finishes inside outside is always the same and this is the final uh, look about this this is a panel which has this hard uh, finish and white and this is the panel which is uh, on, on top which is the acoustic uh, panel uh, Heraclid panel And this is the final layer of uh, zinc uh, layer giving um, this raincoat to the warm coat. This zinc layer we also work in different ways inside. So sometimes it works like here. This is the west facade. It works as a sunscreen for the offices, which are placed here. While in the classrooms, which are on the left of the image these uh, the cloud they have open windows uh, totally open to the um, exterior which is this beautiful countryside uh, landscape and the rest of the decisions like lighting uh, etc as you can see everything is just as it is. There is no uh, aim at hiding installations or placing them in very special ways and so on. It is everything, what you see is what you get, very immediate, which was the point that I wanted to make in this lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Enlich. So, but then, uh, uh, through your uh, lectures, and when we acted, realized uh, contemporary design in your country, in the Barcelona, right? Uh, but like Barcelona, with uh, so much history and the tradition, and tra not only than the physical traditions and the cultural traditions, but then uh, there must be so much struggles. So. But under your way, it's very, very dedicated to the structures. So that uh, can be realized without any uh, conflict, I think. So furthermore, then that kind of way might be connecting to the European tradition, I think. Thank you very much. We learned so much. Thank you. So uh, it's OK. And now, every presentation of this session just, has just finished. So from now, should we get into the discussion time? So first of all, I'd like to ask about an influence from great architects to the three uh, panelists, first of all. That's because at this time, the audience, online audience, so much, so many uh, young architects and young student ideas, 
therefore, for them, uh, this kind of influence and architect career is very, very important and useful for them, I think. Is it okay? So the first of all, then uh, Mr. Enric, uh, you are all the old, old friends of mine. Then, <laughs> yes. uh, when you were so young, uh, <laughs> Well, we are still young. It's architecture design at the Shinohara Atelier, Kazo Shinohara Atelier. Yeah, is it okay? And you took, well, in your doctor thesis, the topic of your doctor thesis, you took in the Shinohara's work and sell it. Is that right? Therefore, but and uh, uh, on condition of that kind of your specific career, so what is the most important point about the relationship? between architectural design and the structural engineer, learning from legend architect Kazu Shinohara. Yeah. Okay. Uh, questions. <laughs> and the second question, you were an architect in Barcelona when there have been the most strongest architectural history and the tradition among so many European countries and cities, I think. On condition of such background, do you feel any different aspect about the role of structural engineering on architectures between Western countries and the European countries, but in the Western countries and the, like the China and the Japan? Yeah. Mm -hmm. As it is no problem to, to be intuitive impressions. Could you say something one more? Okay. Yeah. Um, well, let me answer the last question first. <laughs> okay. uh, I think that, um, as I explained at the beginning, um, our situation here is pretty unique, but it is also similar to the Brazil situation in which architects have a very strong uh, structural education. So we can use this education either as a specialist, so we can design structures and so on, or we can use this education to uh, imagine our projects incorporating a structure from the beginning and then conveying this uh, or generating this dialogue within a specialist. Um, for us in my office, for instance, it doesn't make sense to have in-house structural designers uh, in, in economic terms and also in, in, in knowledge terms, etc. So I prefer to work with outside designers, if possible, with architects, uh, because they have, you know, we have like a common language. Uh, and for us, this is very important. Um, and I think the case in Asia, in, in China and Japan, is a bit different. You, you, you have uh, this Anglo-Saxon separation <laughs> of roles, uh, which, well, in my understanding, now this arch engineering uh, tendency is trying to bring them together again, right? So, and I think this is a very important point. My belief is you cannot imagine architecture without imagining how it is built, construction, and how it is supported, structure. For me, it's impossible. And we see, and this is a problem I believe for many of our students, we see nowadays that architecture art buildings are promoted mostly with images. They are not promoted with drawings, with uh, diagrams, with texts explaining the choices of materials or structure and so on. They're, they are just images. So, and I believe that our students have a problem connecting images with reality. And this is a very serious problem because, of course, we know that uh, and anything can be built nowadays. We have the power technologically to build any shape in any way. It's, it's a matter of economy, but it's a matter of economy not only in, in money terms, but also in ecological terms. 
we should be, as I said before, very careful about where we spend our materials. We should be as um, as careful with this as we are careful where where we spend our money. You know. Thank you. And the first question. And the first question. Uh, so important. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Uh, well, as you know, authority, authority of Kazuo Shinohara. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As you know, um, my doctor thesis, which I believe it was the first doctor thesis about Shinohara sensei, uh, was about the, the his idea of space as moving space, as emotion, right? And what interests me, that's why I, I went to work uh, to Shinohara Toria to start with, was uh, that this construction of an emotion was very realistic, very realistic in terms of materials, in terms of a structure, in terms of construction. Uh, that's what I'm say I'm trying to say before that uh, we are not building images. That's for me, it's meaningless. Mm. This is this can be done by anybody. And there are many people out there, you know, uh, wanting to do architecture. But a real architect for me is someone that is capable of understanding these um, separate necessities, integrating them into a project that combines all of these uh, situations or all these problems. And Shinohara, he was very aware of that. Uh, like many people of his generation. And one thing that is interesting is that he used structural engineer even for his most smallest uh, projects, you know, for Casano IE, for instance, he used a structural engineer. It is how the design, I don't know, it's 10 by 10 or 9 by 9 uh, meters, you know, so it's really very small. But he used that. Uh, in order to have this dialogue, which I think it's very important, because if you work with someone with other experiences, you can have your project more rich. You can enrich your project um, with this dialogue, and I think this is very important. Oh, thank you very much. So that a uh, normal, a uh, general Shinohara, Shinohara image, image is very, very abstract, but and uh, even him, but an actual design phase is a very, very concrete and so very precise, yes. Organized. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Thank exactly. you. Very much. So also all, all the all, see, all the materials and all the choices, construction choices, they're all aligned to the same concept, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So the the there is no gap between concept and reality. And uh -huh. this for me is very important. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, but the next, the next point and uh, Mr. Jun Yanagisawa, it is okay. So, so but then, uh, before you finding, finding your own office as an independent architect, but you have studied an actual design as, at an uh, Toyo Ito office, as mm -hmm. already you, you said. But yeah. so through that kind of wonderful experience, what is the most important aspect that the same question to the Mr. Enric. Yeah. <laughs> what is that from uh, learning from Japan great architect Toyo Ito? Mm -hmm. right. About uh, the structural engineering and, and the relationship between uh, structural engineering and architectural design. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for your question, Professor Okuyama. <laughs> Uh, just a moment. <laughs> Sorry, it was just an imagination. <laughs> oh, what I learned from Toyota is not easy to just put in a few words, but uh, in terms of structure, I would say that the freedom of the ideas gives birth to structure. So in other words, I learned that it is important to look at architecture from a 
perspective that is completely different from the structure of mechanic taught at the university, as uh, Kanabako Sensei just told in the first phase. On the, in the other words, that from uh, multi faced viewpoint and the point of view that is in line with nature or how nature is perceived the architectural. That is, I think, uh, what I learned uh, through Toyoito's office and the Toyoito. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that the answer? Thank you very much. So that, that, that kind of faith, how did you develop it in this kind of your work? Uh, I think in Ito's office, I think that uh, it was some always just talk to that uh, structural engineer, particularly like uh, uh, Sasaki Mutsuro. He proposed always just the kind of the, the image of the structure models. But uh, in my term, my, in my st uh, studies, I never just uh, proposed that, uh, how to say structure model to the structure engineer. I like to, how to say, try to keep more dialogue just uh, in the beginning of the structure engineer. I think this is a different. Oh, okay, okay. So the, according to that, uh, according to that answer, then the, you, have, uh, you, you have designed not only small detached house, but also several public building. Mm -hmm. you can experience mm -hmm. you have any exciting situation of discussion with engineer. Mm -hmm. as, uh, as long as it is a road. Yeah, I guess uh, I don't have a lot of meeting with the architectural engineer, even though I like very much to discuss with them, but uh, I also don't have a lot of, uh, I mainly work with uh, like Akira Suzuki, which is a young uh, structure engineer, or Ken Kamachi is the, a sort of specialist in wooden structure. And then they are very sensitive. And then rather than suggesting dynamic form and the dynamic system, and they are a bit more intellectual and subtle. Yeah. But uh, I'm very excited exactly the moment of, uh, that I touched the, their essence of the engineers. So I think. Uh, how to say, um, I think they, they suggest uh, new structure ideas. I mean, in that sense, and in, through the dialogues, and then also that the things just excite me really. Okay, then the step by step, and then I like the catch balls, and then your image and the structure engineer images, mm -hmm. and uh, so the developing, developing. Yeah, actually breeding the structure images. Mm. And the just and the uh, meeting, uh, meeting press and the meeting press at the just world after that. Yeah. Yeah, actually. Oh. Actually. Uh, mm. <clears throat> Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, next, and then Mr. Lee. Mr. Lee. Okay, but and, uh, I have already told on the opening introduced for you. Uh, you also were known as a co architect for the Beijing Olympic Stadium. So, in the realizing process of that kind of great project, what kind of discussion are there with Jack Herzog and Pierre de Mouron? regarding the structure design. If you have some episode, could you tell us anything? Uh, uh, this is a, a old story, uh, 18 yeah. years or 18 years ago. It's uh, yeah. in uh, 2003. Yeah. Uh, there are one very uh, important design concept uh, being discussed uh, by Herzog Dermro and all the partners uh, in the uh, design process of the birth nice. uh, It is uh, called the structure is the facade. Uh, the architects tried a lot to 
uh, integrate uh, three kinds of uh, steel structure elements into the uh, building facade. Uh, the first is the main uh, structure supporting the roof, uh, including uh, 24 huge columns and 48 uh, beams. And the secondary, uh, the second is the secondary structure uh, with, which connect the main structure uh, elements. And the third uh, is the, uh, 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 the, the inclined uh, uh, structure supporting the, the facade stair for the spectators. Uh, so the, so the, all the three ones uh, are uh, composed and in uh, uh, composed together to form the <coughs> facade in the method of uh, 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 called weaving uh, weaving uh, structure. And the same moment, the 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 um, the uh, uh, concrete structure inside the facade, uh, which supporting the tiers, uh, are also designed uh, <coughs> uh, by the uh, inclined form and be uh, painted uh, the same the similar silver color <coughs> with the steel ones. So uh, not only uh, the facade, uh, uh, the architect um, uh, can uh, integrate the steel and the concrete uh, structure members uh, to form a natural, a a free, uh, and a, a, of course, a complicated uh, 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 and translucent open space. Uh, so, uh, so that's why the the, uh, the structure system forming uh, a, a kind of space and uh, a facade and space uh, called uh, burthenized. So, in my thinking, uh, the structure here is not only the uh, to to uh, the uh, the method to form the special a uh, special facade, but also. Uh, to to use uh, to be used to create uh, a special and interesting space uh, open to the public and the city. Mm. Okay, okay. The, the structure is not only the object that is uh, that is and uh, realize and the uh, actual space that is yes. uh, the uh, intention. Yes. Ah, thank you very much. And next, I'm the in charge of structural engineering of that kind of project. It was an Arab associate, isn't it? Of Arab associate. Yeah. Ah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. On the way of solutions about structural engineering, if there remains your impressive aspect in, in your mind of Arab the solutions, could you please show it to the audience and us? Okay, uh, uh, yes, this is also our story, I think. Uh, Arab is invited by the design uh, consultant as the consult consultant of uh, the structure and uh, sports architecture design in the National uh, Stadium's project. Uh, the most impressive th uh, thing in, uh, in my mind it is, uh, is in the competition stage uh, at the beginning, uh, the Arab engineers uh, denied uh, the, the, the weaving structure, uh, uh, which is an uh, un radical structure. Ooh. You know, the, the stadium is, uh, is uh, uh, almost a circle uh, shape. So uh, they think uh, the, the, the un radical structure is not so, uh, uh, so reasonable. Uh, it seems. Um, uh, uh, because the, uh, the, the, the weaving structure uh, shows the, uh, the, the state, every main beam uh, uh, connected to uh, main columns uh, is tangent to the inner opening of the roof. Uh, it seems uh, this, uh, this structure uh, uh, calls uh, caused a bigger span than the than the radical normal radical uh, uh, structure. 
so it's they think it's not so reasonable uh, in the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it is a, a point of view of structure engineer, I think. Uh, but um, uh, uh, but all the other kind of structure uh, systems, uh, including the radical or the panel, a uh, parallel uh, structure uh, 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 studied uh, after, uh, are all difficult to solve the problem, uh, which uh, is uh, uh, there, are, uh, there are two parallel beams supporting the original retractable roof, which is an openable roof, because in the competition stage, the, the client want a, a huge uh, retractable roof for the stadium. Uh, and the two parallel beams uh, has the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, aesthetic, aesthetic uh, a confliction uh, uh, with the main uh, roof structure. If, uh, if the structure is radical, it's a radical uh, uh, system. Uh, so finally, the architect uh, Jack Herzog uh, sticked, sticked back yeah. to the weaving structure. Uh, 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 and uh, he, um, uh, uh, he was enlightened uh, by, the, by the traditional uh, folk uh, structure, like the weaved uh, baskets. You know, it's, it's like a weaving structure has very um, uh, reasonable structural uh, um, uh, 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 structural uh, 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 yes, uh, state. So it it um, and this uh, structure uh, can be uh, can integrate the two parallel uh, openable beams, uh, op uh, openable uh, ro uh, roof uh, beams into the other forty six uh, beams, which are uh, tangent to the uh, to, uh, uh, to the inner opening of the roof. It is it seems uh, be hidden. Uh, inside the, 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 the all the uh, whole uh, 48 beams. Uh, so this problem was solved uh, very well. Uh, so, uh, and finally, Arab engineers uh, proved the structure is feed, uh, feasible by making a model and, uh, and the calculation. So, so this is a, a, a very uh, interesting uh, story uh, about the work between the structure and the uh, structure engineer and architects discussion. Oh, thank you very much. So the, the that kind of great project, the background, it is so much conflict and it's a discussion is as they're going along. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. So uh, more time on the depot, but but then to next and the Professor Go Iming, is it okay? So. But in your case, the, the in your doctor thesis, the most important aspect of your doctor thesis, you know, it's uh, composed by so huge interview to the Japanese structural engineers. Yeah. The central theme of your research was studied the relationships between architects and structural engineers. Therefore, that's true. That kind of academic research regarding the difference between Japanese and Chinese engineers attitude towards an architectural designs. Could you speak something that more? Okay, thank you, Professor Okuyama. Maybe another chance to, to me for supplements or explain our uh, archineering design teaching as much motivation again. Yes, me. Uh, I, I wrote my doctor thesis about uh, 10 years ago. Yeah. Uh, very uh, uh, old story, also <laughs> old story. But, but uh, I made it as a book uh, titled uh, Made in Structure, Made in Structure uh, More Than Japanese uh, Architecture Form Research, uh, maybe uh, seven years ago uh, as a book. 
I just want to say that the structure is uh, one of the essence of modern architecture, modern Japanese architecture thinking approaches, one of them. Uh, the most different point is that in Japan, the structure is uh, popularly uh, considering as uh, the part of architecture uh, from the education in university to the professional certification. So I think the entire construction industry uh, recognize this point. Structure is uh, uh, naturally collaborate with uh, architecture design uh, with its uh, integrated and uh, holistic, uh, holistic process. Uh, I did believe that my book uh, really active the collaboration of architecture and in the, and, and the structure engineering in China from then on. Uh, in recent uh, such as the Mr. Lee's uh, uh, great works shows, uh, the collaboration of structure and architecture become more and more uh, popular in design process, uh, improving the recent uh, architecture design, both in its technique, quality, and uh, creation. Uh, not only the structure, I think the importance of tech knowledge is being further recognized. But I just want to say uh, for architects, uh, what is the structure or what is the, 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 the tech knowledge? I just uh, list up the, the three characteristics. The performance, the structure performance maybe refers to the safe. The structure process may be refers to the visual uh, form and decoration. Maybe the, the, the senses refer to the, the feelings. So from our architect's view, what is structure? Maybe different from the, engine, and the structure engineering. That's a very important thing, I think. So for the engineering design, we can uh, share the different points, the different uh, cognition on structure uh, with structure, with structure engineering, or with other, other maybe mechanic, uh, mechanic engineering. What is the tech knowledge? So uh, this is a very important uh, way, I think, in the recent years uh, by this, the, 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 the te technique is uh, becoming more and more powerful. So that's, uh, I think it is a, it's, a, it's a big uh, motivation for us to implement engineering design uh, teaching in our school. Maybe I think it's a big, uh, it's a big topic, a big problem. Yeah, maybe a, a big future, but uh, we, we are, uh, want to try uh, to setting uh, in a new angle to the structure or to the, the tech, uh, tech knowledge. I think it's a very important problem. Okay. Thank you very much. So, but the uh, mm. question is uh, the difference from, between the China and the Japan in the situation. But uh, your comment is uh, the total comment <laughs> in the design center. It's okay, no problem, I think. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. and. Uh, so then unfortunately, then it's just coming the closing time of the sessions. Yeah, we'd like to say again, so much appreciation to great four panelists. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. And also for the audience, could you enjoy this international symposium? Thank you so much for your cooperation. So I want to put back my turn to the general uh, moderator. Professor Garmin. Hi. Is it okay? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, all the guests, for your wonderful speech. And all the experts, teachers, and the students for your participation. <clears throat> uh, Thank you, Professor Toro Takuchi and Professor Okuyama for hosting. Thank you, Dr. Guiming and Dr. Yuki Terazawa for your full preparations. Now, I'm very pleased to invite 
professor of Tokyo Tech, Akira Wada, to deliver the closing speech. He is the former president of Architectural Institute of Japan, current president of Japan Society of Seismic Isolations, and very famous in structural engineer and design. Okay. Professor. Okay, thank you very much. Very kind introduction. Professor Masao, Masao Saito is very, very busy today. Instead of him, this is Akira Wada speaking, closing address. Thank you very much for your interesting and stimulating discussion of the engineering. Professor Saito proposed this new word 15 years before, I think. There is a famous story before 1964 Tokyo Olympic during Professor Kenzo Tange and Professor Yoshikazu Yoshikatsu boy designs uh, Yoyogi National Olympic um, Gymnasium. Tange was thinking the structure. Tsuboi was thinking the architecture. This is important. We need more deep collaboration and understanding with architects and structural engineers, each other. And the architectural design is influenced by environment and culture in each country. There would be many good ideas in other countries. We need to discuss between uh, with many countries, architects and engineers. Please continue this important event next year and the future. I hope we can meet in some beautiful city in reality and discuss about the architecture more. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's our honor for your speech. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you all for your participation. Uh, looking forward to the next Akineering Design Research Symposium and its related academic activities. Warmly welcome to Nanjing after this very difficult period. Good health everywhere. Thank you, everywhere. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Can we thank take you. a photos? Okay. Thank you. All, all of us open. Okay. Please open <laughs> your video. <laughs> yeah. Open. Okay. Please screen. Please screenshot. Is it okay? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Bye, Nick. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.